shout, shout, shout out to Davey Bright. Um, all right, so we're taping. Already? Yeah, why not? Okay. We're going to do that Toby, any Toby Hooper stuff later. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get to all like that it. stuff. Um, So, hey, welcome to episode number 20. Damn, it is 20. That's right. Number, yeah, yeah, I was fucking all the numbers up. I was listening to the, I, I have no idea. If I Like, I guess counting is hard or something, you know? It is, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I think it's because we had so many in the, in the can that I just lost track while we were doing them. So, episode 20, uh, Parker's basement with Langan and uh, Mike Randall taking pictures, making sure he gets my double chin in every fucking shot, I'm sure. <laughs> making sure I, I drop a sweat. every disgusting angle he could take. <laughs> um, and Frank from uh, Suffocations in the house. What's going yes. on? That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so upstairs, oh. upstairs we were talking about falling asleep where? Like on, on tour, like in long car rides? Yeah, subways. When you're sitting up, basically, and you have that that head nod jerk. We yeah, were talking yeah, about. yeah. You know, a couple. Of, you know, uh, <laughs> that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> were you able to sleep on those tours that you guys used to do? Um, you pretty much had to. You had a, you know, like back in the day. Well, it, actually, what we did was, um, at first it was all like van tours and stuff, okay. and then sleeping on it. You know, like you, you're rotating. Somebody gets the back bench. You know, for a few hours, and then you know you rotate. But then we came up with the brilliant idea of we rented a rider truck, right. and uh, we would build a whole tour bus in the back because you had you had the wood floor, and you had the two wood slats on the side. Look, I'm giving away trade secrets Not now, yeah. <laughs> and and now I'm gonna get in trouble from rider truck. They, they, you know, from like nineteen from like 1993, they're gonna be like, hey man, you wrecked you know the the floorboards. But we would literally. Uh, put together a whole wall up, drill it into the bottom, in, into the floor, drill it into the sides. We would put bunks. We would. Uh, you had to get the RV, the uh, the rider truck though that had that little door in the back, you yeah, know, between yeah. the two front seats. Right. And then since Doug Cerrito was, you know, an AC guy, he would run the vents. Like he would run flex tube up and into the back. Wow. So we had air conditioning back there, and then the back part of it, you would put all your equipment. So how like, long, how long like did it take? You, yeah. How long wow. did it like, what tour was that <laughs> that you figured out? Like, let's just be comfortable. <laughs> uh, pretty much like, like it, it didn't take too long. And, and, uh, but I mean, yeah, we did a bunch of them like that. We did like the crowbar tour like that. And, and, you know, like that, I mean, that was just the thing. And uh, now yeah, like a, like a little tour bus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you didn't like, for me, like my biggest fear, like we, 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 you know, we've only played a few out of state shows, but like I could never sleep. Because I always felt like I was going to die <laughs> if I. And the only time that I Clip didn't Burton. feel that way, <laughs> yeah, 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 is when I was driving. Like if I was driving, I'm like I feel so at ease now that I could fall asleep and kill us all. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it gets pretty scary. There was one time that we we nearly all bit it, and that was uh, Chris Richards was driving. Shout out to Chris Richards. Yeah, Chris Richards, and uh, he was driving, and I remember I was sleeping on the on the back bunk. And all of a sudden, I literally, like, I got woken up, almost fell out of the bench. I, I pop up, and I see the van is doing up on two wheels, and it drops back down and on the other two wheels. And and apparently, when he was, you know, like, he was driving, and he was kind of, like, laid back driving. <laughs> and I think his foot or his knee hit hit the shifter. That's what he said. Uh, yeah. And like knocked it out of gear and stuff. And then the van just started going nuts. So that was probably one time. That what we, state oh, were you guys in? I don't even like know. Like Albuquerque, yeah. New Mexico. No, we were something? just, we were somewhere in the middle of, middle of the United States. I don't even know where, but. It's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and going back to, to the subway, I remember when I was going to school, I went to the Institute of Audio Research for audio, um, in 2000 and, uh, I remember taking the subway all the time because I, I obviously lived on Long Island, so I would need to go to Manhattan. And one day on the way home from uh, school, the trains were packed on the way to Penn Station and uh, like really sardine packed, right? So everyone's just touching each other. Like that's it. You feel yeah, an yeah. elbow. You feel like whatever. <laughs> so like uh, I jump on the express, which is one stop, but it's really two. It just doesn't stop in the middle. All right. So I'm sitting there, and uh, 
standing. I'm listening to the Misfits. I remember, and all of a sudden, I was just like, oh, "That's weird." I'm like, "I'm kind of getting a boner," <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and I'm just like, "Oh, okay." And then I'm just like, "I'm like, is someone touching me?" And I'm just like looking over and looking at the faces, and I see this like maybe Filipino or like Hispanic lady. She had the sunglasses. I couldn't see, <laughs> and it was like an you know, maybe like 45 year old lady. And like, I'm like looking at her going like, I think this lady's touching my dick. And I like, I felt her like tug on it and it was getting hard. That's crazy. I just let her do it. And then, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You're and like, then, like, hey, whatever, <laughs> you know? Wow. And the then the doors open. On. Yeah. Some you know what? It's like a wet dream a right there. It was, <laughs> it was probably like the romantic misfit song. The smooth yeah. sounds of Glenn dancing in your ears. You know? <laughs> Angel fuck. That's true. It was Angel fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I just like I don't know. You know, the, the story was longer than the like it just like that. In the act, you were you were done that quick. It, it was just. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was like, man, I need some man Annie's right now. <laughs> so you yeah, didn't finish? Did you finish or no? Or no, uh, no, I walked like, out of the no, subway, yeah, threw out my underwear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like that. And then there was another time that some dude was uh, like finger fucking my kneecap. When I was younger, <laughs> I had on shorts. That's crazy. It doesn't even, is that even possible or something? Uh, like, uh, all right, so here's I, I, why he doesn't wear shorts anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's, that was the end of it. That's true. You so, were probably wearing those, like, those cut off jean shorts. The you shorts. Know, like, the yeah. shorts. Yeah. Yeah. I was asking, asking for it. I was it. asking for it. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I was probably in my early teens, and I uh, just remember being on the subway. And it, it was one of those things where I'm like, this can't be happening. So I'm like sitting there and I felt something on my knee and I was like, no. And then I kind of like <laughs> scoot over a little bit and then I felt like this like little pinky doing little circles. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and I was looking for your the, the second time I just got up and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and I fucking the second just, time. Yeah, the second time. Oh, so, yeah, you let, let it happen once. Well, the you first like, time yeah. I was like, this can't be fucking happening. <laughs> Like, and let me then, see if this gets any better. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to be a slut the first time. I was like, and then I not. scooted over, and when I felt his fucking guy. finger again, I was like, yeah, absolutely. And then I woke up, yeah. and I was just like, nah. I'm like, I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. And I just walked to the other. I have to Google that finger uh, fucking kneecaps. To see if he was doing thing. like yeah. little, like little circles on my kneecap. You know, I, I'm sure there's probably like a like a small little grouping In of Japan. people that that you know you actually meet every Thursday night. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And you talk about it, and you, you know you, you you have your experiences, you know. I got to do that. I already I already talked about the time I made out with my dad. So. Yeah. That was a good one. Oh I, man, that was an old episode. Yeah, <laughs> that was the pilot. That was got us so- got us picked up. <laughs> that was that one got us the next nineteen. <laughs> so um, yeah, man, thanks for doing this. Yes. Um, no problem. So many questions that I have for you. Um, at first, I just want to give this little shout out. I was reading an article um, like last week or two weeks ago, the the dude uh, at the Metallica show. Oh, that pissed on that family. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear about that? I heard, I heard something. Yeah, so it, it, th- this guy... Yeah, you're going to have to fill me in. I, I did hear about somebody pissing on... So it's like a... First of all, this guy brings his family... Like, it was like family and like the son and like, you know, they're out to a nice outing at a Metallica show, <laughs> okay. probably waiting for Fuel or whatever other songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said that um, he, you know, the dad felt this like warm liquid on all of them. And he was just like, what the fuck? And when he turned around, the dude <laughs> behind in like the row above yeah. had his fucking dick out of his pants and he was peeing all over the... <laughs> so he, oh. he hit the whole family? He hit the whole family. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well. Like that's unbelievable. Yeah. But uh, you know what? Hey, um, are you are you going to sympathize? With no, that? I mean, I mean, look, look, nothing's going to surprise me in a Metallica concert. I mean, you yeah. know, you're going to get drunk and hammered people. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I've seen it where you know, like you're in a bar setting or whatever over in Europe, where I I seen the dudes just like piss piss themselves right there at the bar. You know, like he's all hammered, drunk, and he's and next thing you know, it's just pulling up down below and, and everything. You're like, yo, this is crazy. This guy can't just get up and hit the bed. bathroom. So, <laughs> yeah. so what you're saying is, like, at least this guy took his dick out. I, I and mean, his pants weren't it, wet. So it, it, comfort yeah, first. I mean, I, mean uh-huh. I, I, I guess, like, I guess, you know why? He probably didn't realize 
that that wasn't the bathroom. Yeah. Like he probably True. thought, you know, you can be that. Like, 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 you know, he was yeah. just hanging out, and the music was hitting him, and he probably, he probably thought it was like, you know, the music that you play in the elevator and stuff, and he was just like, what do you do though? Like, <laughs> like you're the whole family. Like, let's say, like, the, let's should have had the decency to just piss on the dad or something. Uh, like, there was children involved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I'm, <laughs> but, I, but I'm exactly, but I'm saying, like, just. Like, what do you do if like Volbeat's on? Do you hang around for the ne- for Avenged Sevenfold and eventually get to Metallica and you're pissed clothes? Like, you can <laughs> no. Probably- I, I mean, if I'm pissed on and I got the family there, he's getting his ass kicked. Yeah, and then I'm leaving. Like, I'm not yeah. hanging out and the dude's pissed, right. and my family's not hanging out. You know. <laughs> Pissed up or yeah. whatever. Yeah, because you can't even sit you know? there. You can't even be like, all right, guy. Like, even if they kicked him out, you're still sitting there. Come like, on, <laughs> you know. Right, like after a while, that ammonia smell is going to start settling in, and you're like, this is, you know, this is disgusting. Man. I just wanted to just totally just say that story. It, it, the headline was just fantastic, and I wanted to click onto it because I was like, this can't be real, and I'm reading it, and yeah. it's on spin. I was like, I, once it pops up on multiple sources. It, yeah. yeah. Once it's on metal sucks, metal injection, <laughs> metal hammer, metal yeah. whatever the fuck. Yeah, right, Once it's legit. on blabbermouth, I definitely the TMZ of exactly. metal. <laughs> <laughs> I like when they asked Paul Stanley what he thought of Mayweather McGregor. <laughs> like <laughs> That's when I placed my bet. I was holding out till I found right. out what the Star Child thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. It's like we got the singer of Bang Tango and he's going with McGregor. So let's, let's just go there. So, um, did you ever cross paths with Metallica, like being in, in like suffocation and any like festival and like Vakken or some crazy shit? Like um, not, no, not, not really. No, yeah. I mean, they were always, you know, we were always, I mean, probably some of the biggest bands we crossed that I, I've seen at festivals like Ozzy, Kiss, Motorhead, you know, stuff like that or whatever. And, and and I mean, like, you know, they're obviously doing their own thing. Like, you don't really, you know, get to bump into right. them and like, hey, what's up? I mean, Lemmy, I did yeah. and everything. But like Ozzy, you know, he gets on stage, you know, they escort him out they there. Do. And yeah, yeah, you're not really going to get to see him It's like a out. prize fighter going to yeah. like, when, the one, <laughs> when my friend opened up for Ozzy like at the Mike garden, Tyson. we were all hanging out outside. And they like rushed him in with like a hood and his people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Tyson coming in. It's because he's like, like oh, I plugged in to awesome. charge the guy, you know, because he doesn't know what the fuck is going on. I was listening to uh, a podcast recently, and the the current singer of Warrant, I guess his name is something Mason. Well, he was telling us to get me there. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> Let's just I, say, it's not Janie Lane. Without uh, Janie, there's no long. Part. So he Please. he told a story Scabs. on on like um, how he got hired to sing in the background, like an actual like you know you hear those stories, right? Oh, that was okay. I, yeah. I saw the headline. I didn't read that story. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. wild. Like they hired him to go to basically do. Uh, I forget what tour it was. Maybe it was Osmosis. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's up there. He's <laughs> he got to have there. some backing. You know, you know? but that's crazy. So they gave him, like, a booth and all this other shit, like vocals, a monitor, and all that other stuff. Like, so it really happens. Like, yeah. did, you right. ever, did you ever see anything crazy like that? Well, like, somebody just coming in and just, uh, yeah. I mean, not really, no. You know, like. No one when you, you want to put on blast? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, Meg- <laughs> no Megadeth story. <laughs> <laughs> Got my eye on you, Mustaine. Yeah. But um, so you figure 1988. Yeah. Like that's when the band starts, right? Pretty much, yeah. Like 1988, 89. You know, right, right around that. In Center Range. Uh, no. Basically, at that point, I was living in Stony Brook, so I was going to Ward Melville High School, and then the other guys in the band, Mike Smith and Doug Cerrito and them, those guys were going to Longwood because I. Moved from Longwood and Quorum area to Stony Brook in in eleventh grade, and then pretty much right around probably yeah probably around like twelfth grade right after we were graduating. That's when the band you know pretty much came came together. And like eighty eight, like the landscape. First of all, uh, all right. Because I was thinking when when I was thinking Center Reach, <laughs> like I was yeah. just thinking Body Talk. Was anyone alive for Body Talk? I feel like Body Talk. Oh yeah, been- yeah, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> body- I, of course, I was there. <laughs> body like, Talk. I felt like Body Talk's been like closed down. Like, since- <laughs> see, you see, that's the thing. You know, like like people don't remember this, but all up and down, you could literally. So what you would do is you would start out in like Ridge, and uh, you would go to the quarter post. 
down a ridge. I remember that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you'd start your night there. You'd hang out there for a drink or two and uh, hang out with the ladies. And then you would drive from there. You would hit Body Talk down at Center Reach. And then if you were a little further, you usually get down and you would end up uh, – no, there was two more places. Before you got to – oh, man, what was the last one? Before you got to that, though, there was uh, the Brass Monkey. Where was that? That was right on the corner of uh, 347 and uh, Middle Country Road. Oh, so that was like where, where the that bull Chinese is. restaurant is in the bull, like the bull is. I think no, no, no. Then, it, then it was the one down by the bull. Okay, so that- you could literally make you you could have four of them on the way down there. Wow. I remember me and Terrence went into the Brass Monkey one time, <laughs> and we're hanging out in there, and um, we're drinking, and uh. This girl gets up there. The Brass Monkey was known to sometimes have ladies that were not up to par. Yeah. So she gets up there. and it's Most of our listeners yeah. right there. So yeah. Bring it up. Let's talk about it. And she, she's like, she's got glasses <laughs> on. And like, she's a little like, I don't know. A little. Uh, Looks like it's Pat. A little chunky, like you know, stuff player. going on. And, and like. Oh man, it was so bad, and she did not know how to dance. And is it the day I, shift? I, no, no, no. This is this is the evening, you know. And and wow. I was like, I was like, man, I, I can't even drink here anymore. I, I said, I, I we have to get out of here. We have to leave, and you know. So, but the brass monkey was no one's yeah. Uh, yeah, and I remember like moving because I moved from Queens to Selden in 1988. So okay. I, yep. I, I always remember just body talk being closed, but like, it was just, <laughs> we just, I mean, I was 10, so <laughs> I wouldn't Someday. have seen it. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> one day. One day I'm going to get in there. <laughs> and it seems so far away when you don't drive, like from like, oh, yeah. from, co- <laughs> from College Road, shout out. You know, it's like over there. It seemed like forever it was. <laughs> so. so in 1988, like, fucking, like, hysteria. That, like, there were so many th- other things going on. Like, what made you want to create something so brutal i mean you know i was always into like you know bands and stuff and and everything since i was probably about 15 years old uh i played in a in a cover band with um a few of the members from suffocation namely josh Barron, uh terrence hobbs and we were in a band called tormentor we played like some exodus songs Slayer songs. We had a couple of our own songs together. You were I, singing in that band too? No, I was playing uh, bass in that band. Oh, okay, okay. What did you think of Bonded by Blood? Am I the only one? Because we, we, we just had this, this discussion. We were talking about uh, that yeah. upstairs. Yeah, it just like, it, 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 people love that record. And, and, and Ron Grimaldi explained it great. I get it. Like, it just needed to be there. It was like more of like a... A place in time because like when I go back to it because the ones I remember are the ones later it's so raw yeah like, well well I bought bonded by blood because of, just because of the album cover great cover yeah. you know like like it, that, it that's what you did then of course you, you know yeah. you either had van, fan scenes or or you, it was none of this stuff was getting played on the radio no were you crazy that that was the time where it was like if you listen to this music you're into Satan, yeah, yeah. and you're a serial killer, and you hate your parents, and you're gonna bludgeon the whole family. Shout like out every- to Rick. Shout out to Ricky Kelso. <laughs> <laughs> like, like everyone thought, every house on Long Island, if you were listening to that kind of music, yeah. and you know, it was the Amityville horror going on right. in the house. So you couldn't hear it anywhere. So, like, you know, you'd go to the record store and you'd walk around, and and it would be like, all right, you know, like, let me check it out. And I pulled up that album cover, and I, you know, I had the demonic baby mm-hmm. connected to the regular baby, and it was like, "There's no way that this thing is gonna suck shit." <laughs> <laughs> like it's not. If I, I'm, it's not bringing this home, and I'm gonna be like, "What is this garbage?" Yeah. And you know, like that's how I bought a ton of albums back then. Me too. I think we all did. Yeah. Like that's how I like. I mean, to see Kill 'Em All and not want to get it, I'm sure. like, right. "What are you out of your mind?" And any maiden, <laughs> when I turned it around, I was like. Look at these ugly mother... Not that I'm a beauty contestant. I'm like, there's no way these guys are playing anything soft. Uh, Lars, that, Lars is the worst picture. Lars looked like playing. Janet's sister from Three's Company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That but, was, yeah. The artwork was big. No? Maiden, Maiden, too. Yeah, yeah Ma- Maiden had great artwork. Right? Like I the, mean, amazing. Yeah. You know, the character, Eddie. Yeah. I mean, you see, like, like Killers, you saw... 
Um, number of the beast. I mean, come on, you know, like there's no way you're gonna be like this is gonna be garbage. There's a guy. I think his name is Martin Popoff. He's actually making a book now uh, on every. It's it's a book, and the chapters are every Iron Maiden record. Mm -hmm. So I guess he goes through them. I don't know if he does the Blaze Bailey records, but I would imagine he should. So, <laughs> I, I, well, I'm just saying, like, if you're gonna make you a fucking a page, book, like, yeah, these albums, I don't know. <laughs> Next, <laughs> front and cliff back. notes, <laughs> a little asterisk. Yeah. After 19. Well, I remember one, one of the one of the, the the craziest transformations I've ever seen in a band was, so you know, Motley Crue comes out and you know, shout at the dead. She's got the looks he kill. Mm-hmm. They're wearing leather pentagrams, yep. spikes, and everything. And then I believe the next album would come out, right? And I turned, I turned it over, and I was <laughs> I like, I was like, what happened to the, who are these girls <laughs> and what that are in the band Mon- right now? Yeah, yeah. What, what had it, it, like they were wearing like lingerie Vince and like la- pink. lace All gloves, yes. yeah. lace gloves, and I was like, wait, wait a minute, there's no way to just the, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Go, like, man. like where did it all go? I mean, from 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 up their nose, too, yeah, from <laughs> from too fast for love, um, and and shout at the devil, yeah. you know, like that must have been crazy to go into that because once again, we like on the Facebook page for 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 the group we're doing, we were doing like brackets for the best of nineteen eighty five, so theater of pain came up, hmm. <clears throat> and everyone like Ron Grimaldi or like Derek Sessions or people who remember that record. They were just talking about how upset they were because the first two records were so goddamn good yeah. that they right. were just it, it, yeah. I mean, it was it was just a huge transformation that you were like, all right, so so what do you, what exactly are you? You know, you're like you were portraying this side, yeah. And it was such a drastic change that I was just like, I wonder when what? Doc McGee started managing <laughs> them. Seriously though, yeah. If they picked up, because it's like you guys could be so much bigger. Yeah. it was. Clearly... It's like, do you guys want Satan or pussy and cocaine? Right, right. right. <laughs> I'm sure that band vote didn't take long. Nah. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Mick Mars is trash. He he was always trash. His guitar playing sucks. Right. I play <laughs> guitar. I he's a bit that. sloppy. <laughs> I mean, I just think it was just nothing. It wasn't. It was as good for them, though. You yeah. know, he was like the Sid Vicious of he guitar. He was no George Lynch. <laughs> Sid Vicious of guitar. <laughs> I don't. I think so. So yeah. So w- w- like um, Exodus. Like, what else was influencing Thrash you guys? Probably had to be your game. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, I mean, Venom probably. Right, right. I, I, so I mean, like, you know, it all started out. You know, probably like the 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 stuff that I was listening to at the time when I was young was like in school. I remember the the big debate when I was probably I don't know like thirteen, fourteen, maybe. It was like uh, who's better, Van Halen or Ozzy Osbourne. You know, like that was the, yeah. and I mean, Ozzy was sick, you know, right. like Diary of a Madman and all that. And it was like, yo, like, so then, then, I mean, basically most of the influences that I grew up on was definitely the thrash based, uh, some hardcore that was in there as well. Uh, you know, there were bands like, I mean, Carnivore, um, you know, you had, uh, uh, Devastation, you know, um, uh, destruction, right. destruction's uh, really good. Like, yeah, I, just I mean, got, I just got into uh, destruction. I never, creator, yeah. Creator. I mean, you know, it's just stuff like My that. Like, like that. That was a lot of the, you know, the things that were going on, and and then also too, I was into like, you know, venom. Um, I mean, yeah, it was, Battery it was, you know, that too. I mean, not not so much that, you know, but like, yeah, definitely like venom. Um, and and it was just, you know, like. I definitely wanted to play something heavy and crazy. And then uh, the first album that I totally knew, yo, I'm going to play some brutal-ass fucking shit, was Slayer Hella Waits. When I brought that shit home, you know, riding my bike home with it on cassette, I put it in, and that blew my mind right yeah. there. Metal, I mean, metal it, Blade, man. I yeah. mean, it, it, it was so crazy back then. I never heard so anything heavy. that was like... Fa- that fast and right. singing that fast and right. I was like yo these guys are nuts the lyrics man. Well, zombie another shit. band with Murders. great cover after That's cover a killer cover yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cover all the time. Great I actually cover. drew that cover on 
You know when you had the brown ba- bag, like yeah. notebook. Uh, oh yeah. Book oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, drew yeah. the whole cover and like was like sent home and shit with like a letter <laughs> that there was like something wrong with me to my parents. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Matt Matatuck's a different place. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I had the, uh, the I had the Celtic Frost, the Throned Emperor back patch oh, yeah. on my jean jacket wearing right. at the school. It was that you know the the demonic beast or whatever you know yeah. with the. the oh, yeah. The, the chicks with their tits hanging no. out and stuff and everything, and I'm wearing this around school. And so like I was like, I don't give a fuck, nah. you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. you're you're gonna be happy to know because you just mentioned hella weights. Yeah. Like I was talking about the brackets. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna tell you what the the two final records are because we started off with th- 32 albums. Every kind of music. Every yeah. Every kind of okay. Yeah, yeah. 32 <laughs> albums and uh, 32 <laughs> movies. <laughs> so right now in the finals, Goonies is beating out Better Off Dead. Which it shouldn't. It I, should. I agree. No. I'm, I'm a big Goonies fan. Yeah. So, um, and Goonies and Better Off Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the best movies. Where, where do we start from? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Good answer. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they beat out The Last Dragon, Mannequin, Rocky IV. <laughs> oh, Rocky like just Four. any movie and stuff. Oh, it was 32. Everything that yeah. Came out that everything year. that came out in 1985. Commando. Was that it? Yeah. That one? Yeah. Wait, Commando was in there? Commando yeah. Was and Commando's there. not in the top. No. no Arnold Schwarzenegger nice. just no. l- All right. lobbing grenades and stuff. It recount. Lost, recount. It lost, <laughs> back. it lost out to The Last Dragon, I think. I think so. Or Rocky. Oh, no, it beat Rocky Four. Did I it? love Rocky Four. Rocky Four is fucking, fucking phenomenal. Drago. Drago's coming back Rocky in Creed Four. Two. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that. That's a pretty good it's one, right there. It's got the best training montage ever when he's it in does, Russia and he's yeah. chasing that great chicken Great soundtrack. And shit. Great on, soundtrack. Man. The fact that Paulie wants to fuck the uh, the robot. Way, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Good for him. But And then you're going to shit your... <laughs> <laughs> but here's the cap. Right? <laughs> the, the, the top two albums, <laughs> because I'm a huge Cure fan, but so are you. Lock Head the up. door so he doesn't leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't stop talking. <laughs> um, so it's Hella Waits. Yes. Uh, versus the cure's head on the door, and the cure won. So, wow. damn. Wow. Yeah, it was close. Man. It was close. Very close. All yeah. right. It was a I mean, uh, it's tough because you got a lot of different. It might be <laughs> one of. It might be the second best cure record. Mike's still upset. He's leaving. He's still upset. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it might be the the best cure. Did the second. Uh no, but probably the other way is better. Yeah. It might be the second best Cure record, and but like Hella Waits is like a complete like building up to Rain and Blood. Like you could it's just a yeah. big change from Show No Mercy to that's definitely the stepping stone yeah. to where they right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, you could definitely tell that 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 the next album was going to be insane. Yeah, right? yeah and you then, could yeah. hear. Yeah, and it, and it was I think the production. It was Rick Rubin's production, just really right. Rick Rubin did Hello Waits? No, no, he did... Um, oh, you're talking about Rain and Blood? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Gotcha. yeah. I was going to say. So he's, I mean, I guess he heard Hello Waits and was like, fuck it, let's do it. Yeah, well, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Wow, the rest <laughs> is fucking album slays. Yeah. So. What about, like, um, were you into, like, Napalm Death, some of that oh, yeah, stuff of course. coming out of that? Because that yes. was, like, some of the first extreme shit. Yeah, yeah, de- definitely into Napalm Death. Scum. And, I mean... I mean, the craziest thing was from like 19, you know, when I started going to shows back then from like 1986, 87 till like, you know, when the band was really starting and we were putting out, the first album came out, F&G came out in uh, 1991. So between that time, yo, it was the best time on the fucking planet those years because every single weekend there was shows Yep, and it was sick shows. Like, I remember going to Sundance almost every single weekend, whether it was hardcore shows, Cro-Mags, Minor Threat, Youth of Today, Crumb Suckers, Thrash Shows, Exodus, Testament, you know, Violence, all that, Death Metal Shows, Mormon Angel, Napalm Death, you know, like, I mean, it was everything. That's crazy. And then, you know, once in a while, you'd have to go to, like, one of the... You know the hair band shows, you know, yeah. and like you know, because like so either, you either your yeah. girl, yeah. Either, <laughs> or, or that, or your girlfriend drags you there. Yeah. She's like, you know, hey, you know, like, uh, 
you know, Dangerous Toys is playing. Oof. Can we go? And it's like, oh, my uh, God. Dangerous <laughs> Toys just played Ron Konkuma <laughs> this <laughs> year, yeah. like a few months, Where? like two months ago. It, that track. The VFW, that, I yes. think. It, it, Ron Konkuma VFW. <laughs> it, 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 yes, it's, nice. it's a, the, the forgotten corner, like Long Island, like Ron, that Ron Konkuma train station. Yeah. Where it, everything that, like, you know, the Midas Touch? This is the opposite. <laughs> like whatever goes there, it just Dies. goes to die. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've seen a couple of shows there, and like like they, none of the places ever last there. But no. nothing. There's like a subway there that I'll never go out of business. <laughs> but other than that, it's just like it, it 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 might as well be like a fucking shitty block in like Missouri. That's what it looks like when you get off the train. <laughs> you know, like you get off and you're like Ron Conk, my here I am, and then yeah, you see this. It doesn't look yeah. good from the outside. <laughs> no, like yeah. Axl Rose would have just like remember in the <laughs> got back on the bus. He would have got right back on the bus <laughs> and just like get done another. So, but all right, uh, Human Waste though that that was the first EP, right? That so, was the first EP. Was, uh, the first thing was the reincremation demo. Right, uh, we done that. You got the band together, like right, like you guys. Yeah, were- yeah. So like a couple of the guys were in a band called Mortuary at the time, and that right. was basically uh, Terrence Hobbs, Mike Smith. Doug Cerrito, Billy Reyes, and I think uh, Chris Basile uh, might have been in that band as well at that time. And then me and Josh at the time, you know, like I, I wanted to put something together. I started talking with Josh. He wasn't doing anything. And then we started reaching out to like like they had the Good Times magazine. Right. Yeah. And you could find dudes in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it was like two guitar players who were at the Morbid Angel, you know, this, that, and the other thing, wanting to play, you know, something heavy. And that's when I uh, we contacted them, reached out, and uh, sure enough, it was Guy Marche and uh, Todd German. And uh, so we all got together, and then we didn't have a drummer, so I knew a couple of kids at school, you know, play drums. So this kid I knew, Brian Kutner, I was like, hey, man, you know, you want to come down and just help us out, you know? So we went to, like, some studio over here and like, uh, you know, probably, like, Islandia or something like that or whatever, and uh, we just got together, started trying to put some songs together, and uh, during that time, we actually uh, we wrote Catatonia. Uh, you know, that was one of the first songs that, that stuck with, you know, the original guys uh, that were in the band. And pretty much Mortuary had broken up at that point. So then now it just started, like, I started filtering in. The kid Brian, who was playing drums, like, he, it, this really wasn't the type of music that he was into or into doing. Did he have a hard time keeping up? No, no. I mean, I mean, he was a good drummer, but like, he wasn't it really. Wasn't yeah, he wasn't into death metal and stuff as much, you know. So like, uh, then that's when Mike Smith came into the band. You know, I was like, hey man, why don't you come down and check this out? He came in, and then uh, Guy was still in the band, and then Guy left to go do Pyrexia, and at the time, then Pyrexia Internal Bleeding, I forget which one. And then at the time, Terrence came into the band. So now, the guy Todd was trying to play and keep up with Terrence and, and you know, like he pretty much knew he was like, yeah. he was like, man, he's like, it's frustrating, man. I can't to this day, that guy's to so this day, bad. just watching like his videos. That's I'm just insane. like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, thank you. And then, and then when, and then when Todd left, then that's when Doug came into the band and he was, you know, the last missing piece at that point. And, uh, you know, Terrence and Doug just, they're, they're writing, and the and the stuff they were able to do and put together was amazing. I mean, like you know, they they just their styles bounced off each other, and still to this day, you know, one of the the great, amazing guitar duos, you know, of all it time. Seemed, it seemed a bottle when that works. Yeah, yeah it's, it <laughs> yeah, seemed serious. like from like the jump, like those earlier, re- like he's still like he's killing it on the guitar yeah. completely. Um, <laughs> Where did you get like the vocal styling influence from? Like, what what made you just like? Did you start singing like that with them, or you kind of it, developed it over time? Like? No, yeah, I pretty much started like that. Uh, it, what happened was uh, before all of that happened, we were just messing around one day, and and uh, one of our friends' uh, garage is Mike Floria, and uh, we put together a little band called like Womb Rot, okay, and we had a song called Cesarean Section, and this is where I first started <laughs> to sing. So I grabbed the mic, you know, and I started singing, and I couldn't talk for like two days after it. Like, I, like I was like, and and what what I what I liked was at the time I liked the way Barney sang from They Palm Death. Right. You know, I liked the heavy vocals. You know, low end. So that that's what I was trying to do, and and it just so happened that you know I was like, all right, you know, I'm I'm just gonna keep at it, mm-hmm. and uh, 
the rest is history. You know, How did just, you? Because um, I used to take my old vocal teacher is a lady called uh, her name is Melissa Cross. Okay, she, she would teach like she has a, a DVD called The Art of Screaming. So like, how did you teach yourself? Like, just how to do it correctly? <laughs> Blow it out. No yeah. idea. No idea. I guess, I guess it was. I guess a combination of luck and just you know. I mean, I mean, it's just crazy. You know, like I, I knew, I knew not to sing necessarily all from the throat, right? Because like, there's no way it's gonna last. You yeah. know, like you're gonna. So, I mean, I, I guess just. You know, teaching myself. I mean, I, I did, there was nobody to really look for. You know, at that time, like what? You know, what kind of vocal coach is going to really know? Like, <laughs> you know, death time. metal and like, right. you know, hey, there's a proper way to scream your face yeah. off and, and yeah, keep and maintain it. So yeah. that style of singing wasn't, you know, so prevalent then. I mean, you're credited a lot too because the the way you did it too, you can. You were Barney and some of the other. You know, not to slag anything, but like they were mm. 100 miles an hour and you couldn't understand stuff. Right, you could understand what you were singing, you know. What I mean? Right, yeah, yeah, and and that's that's what I wanted to try to do, and especially as it got even, you know, later on in the career and stuff, is is that you know, I wanted to make it where you 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 could understand the words and, and you could see what was going on, and I and I I definitely wanted power behind the voice, right. you know, and uh, and then it was crazy, you know, a few years back. So as you get older, you start. Things start going wrong, so I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, man, you know, this this is weird, you know. I never had this, you know, up here and 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 this going on. So I go to the doctor. He's like, all right, you know, you got like acid reflux is going on. So they do the thing where they, you know, the upper endoscopy yeah, yeah. where they check you, and he goes, man, he goes, your vocal cords are like giant meat chunks, <laughs> like they just they just it's just a big thick wad of muscle. He's like, "What do you?" I said, "I must be." Singing. You said, "Thank you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, "I was like, it's been singing death metal, I guess, for you know, twenty something years or whatever <laughs> at that point." Because he said, "Yeah, normally, you know, there it's it's like a thin membrane or whatever." And right. he's like, "You guys are just jacked up on steroids." Wow. <laughs> so impressive, yeah. <laughs> no, awesome. So I guess whatever I was doing, I guess worked, you know, yeah. and 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 it it maintained it, and then that's how I was able to do it for all these years. And when did the the name suffocation come about? Uh, I came up with the name, you know, ba- basically came up with the name and took the name all in the same uh, process. So when Morbid Angel came out with Alters of Madness, right. there was a song on there, Suffocation. And I was like, yo, man, wait, Suffocation? Yeah, that that's it. That's the name yeah. of the band. The song was the sixth song. And... Uh, and then you know, just hearing it, and like, and at that time, at that time too, there was a lot. Like that was the thing. There was a lot of shun bands, immolation, incantation, revocation. You know, like, mm-hmm. and um, and just suffocation wasn't taken yet. And I was like that. And I was <laughs> like, that's it. That. I was yeah. like, suffocation sounds yeah. sounds awesome. Now, um, do you remember your first tour? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 How long was that? Because like I figure, like w- once you start like building up that voice, I would imagine once you go like on, on a month trip, that's got to be like tricky, you know? Like you're out hanging out, smoking. I don't know if you. Smoke oh yeah, cigarettes yeah, or, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, I didn't it, really smoke cigarettes and stuff and everything. Like I did when I was younger. Nice. You know, like I, I, no I did. Crew. I did for a short period of time there, probably like fourteen till about you know. 20 or something shout like out that. to randall's lungs and then yeah and then I, I i was done with it and um and i you know i, I at the time it, it was i had a girlfriend her mother made me a bet she's like hey you know if you quit smoking for two months i'll give you two hundred dollars i was like two hundred dollars i said you're crazy all right boom done and then I, right pack, now, and I didn't smoke again you know <laughs> but um what the fuck kind of like, <laughs> imagine that she must really not have wanted you to smoke did uh, you yeah. guys break up eventually yeah I mean yeah we broke up yeah definitely but uh but I got the two hundred dollars you know I get that first. <laughs> but I mean yeah the first uh, major tour we did we we went over to Europe and, uh, and it was on effigy yeah it was well basically effigy we didn't do a whole lot of touring and stuff because it was like it came out and um there was like the support and stuff really wasn't completely totally there yet for the band as far as like the, the audience or the label it, the label and and stuff like that and and trying to get it all together so um i think the main tour was either towards the tail end of that or the beginning of you know breeding the spawn 
And we went over to Europe, and uh, we went with uh, Johan the Messmaker. He was a Belgian promoter, and he would take all the bands over there at that time. So he puts you on a bus. It's like, like, like this bus literally had, it was just mattresses. <laughs> you know, there was like nothing else. It was, just, it was an empty bus with mattresses on the floor. But, I mean, it was awesome, though. You know, you're like, yo, I'm in fucking Europe here. Well, that's I'm, probably what you're thinking. You're thinking like, hey, I'm a kid in a fucking band in Europe playing music. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. We I were follow like, anybody with the fucking name <laughs> Johan, so fucking <laughs> put me wherever. Yeah. And I mean, you know, so we're like, we're 22 years old or whatever, you know, playing, you know, over in Europe. And uh, and it was awesome. I mean, you know, like, you, you know, p- people finally seeing you for the first time. They... They were embraced the band. I mean, almost immediately. Yeah, and it was. You play, where what yeah. parts of Europe were you playing in? Like, I mean, pretty much. You know, the like, like the first time over there was all the major stuff. So you know, Germany, France, uh, Spain, Italy. Was the Sweden was, scene breaking then too? With like a entombed and everything. I forget that. Yeah, and, entombed was around at that time and right. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then we would do a couple of shows, but actually, uh, they, they were from Denmark and stuff. But a band called Conqueror. Okay. We had done uh, shows with them over in Europe and tours and stuff like that with them and everything. And how cool is it, you know, being like a Long Island band, bunch of young kids playing death metal where most people are probably like, that's going to get you nowhere. And here you are, 22. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, I'm in fucking Europe fucking supporting this record, you know? Like, that's... Well, well, yeah, I mean, like, you know, like, and and especially, yeah, because over here, you know, at the time, there wasn't too many band, you know, death metal bands. Nirvana hit. That had the success that that we started having on Long Island, you know, right. and and like it was just it was weird because you know there were so many of these other bands that were out at the time and and stuff and and like you know because you got to remember too at that same time was also the the hair band explosion, so like a lot of the bands right. on Long Island were following that route, sure. and we were like you know I was like. We're just gonna play brutal death. It's like you guys, hair bands, and Billy Joel cover (laughs) cover bands. (laughs) Oh, big shot, (laughs) fucking Billy Joel. So you guys are 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 doing your thing, but like I said, like in '91 around the effigy time, like Nirvana hits and everything changes. So like, did 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 that even like affect your trajectory, or is it just like you you had your own path? Not really. I think I think you know the the where it really started gaining steam was probably not until the third album when Pierce from Within came out. And then at that point... You recorded that with Scott Burns and stuff, right? Yes. Down in Tampa? No, no, we did... Uh, yeah, 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 we did that down in... Uh, no, we did Effigy in Tampa. Okay. And then Pierce from Within... Yeah, yeah, we did that one down in Tampa as okay. well. And then I think, if I can remember correctly, I think for the Despise the Sun EP, we brought Scott Burns up here. Oh, okay. To record, yeah. but um, that's where it was really starting to gain steam, sure. you know. And and it was like, wow, now this thing's really picking up. Yeah. We were doing more tours at that point, uh, tours with different, ba- you know, Crowbar and stuff like that, you know. Like so, the the band at that point, I, I felt was you know taking off. But did you I guys mean, quit your jobs? And I uh, no no see see like the early part of suffocation. That was the one thing that was you know probably hindered. Was that I got married and I had a child and I was uh, I was basically twenty three years old. So nineteen ninety three is when my daughter was born, and so now I couldn't really tour as much because I had a, I had a solid job here and I had to support the family and take care of everything. So so the early part of suffocation I couldn't really tour as much, and then ultimately I think that's what started you know the the downward trend of us not being able to be out on the road as much as all the other bands. How how'd the rest of the band like take to that? I mean, like at, at first, you know, and, and I and I what would happen is by the time right after Pierce from Within, I you know I told the guys I was like, hey man, I I don't want to hold anyone back from you know you know like doing what they want to do and stuff. So if you guys want to you know go a different route with somebody else and everything like that, I totally understand. 100%. After Pierce, yeah, after Pierce from Within, because it was. On that tour, uh, on those couple of tours, there were some times where I couldn't do what was coming up. So I remember one time they they took Keith DeVito out. Um, he did some song, you know, he, he did some some shows with the band, and I was like, yo, you know, like I totally get it, you know, like I understand, man. I I'm not here to like hold anyone back, and it's like, you know, if I can't do it, you can't do it. Right, right. So um, 
I think they, you know, they they were going to try to go that route. It didn't work out, and then uh, and then what ended up happening was like a weird thing happened towards like 1998. Like death metal started, like it it it, it wasn't gaining steam anymore. It was starting to come down. People weren't into it as much. It's weird times, 98. Yeah, yeah. Like, right around there. And so, we broke up in 98. You know, we played the last show at the Milwaukee Metal Fest um, that was out there and, and basically told the fans, you know, like, this is it. You know, thank you and everything. And, uh, and you know, we kind of just went our own ways and stuff. You know, some of the guys, you know, started up their own businesses and things like that. So, the real insane part of the band didn't happen until we got back together and that was after I went through a divorce and everything else I called up the guys I was living in Vegas and this is about 2003 fucking Vegas or 2002 how long did you live in Vegas I lived there for two years I mean isn't that like the worst place to raise a family (laughs) I mean we were already going through stuff here so like you know why not just you know, like, Have let's just temptation. go to Vegas. No. You <laughs> Get know, it over like, with. Like, I, I, I love Vegas. You know, I think I'm sure I would love Vegas too. If I but wasn't I mean, married. I mean, it wasn't that bad. Uh, the cost of living there was amazing. I mean, you can hardly afford anything here on Long Island. You go out there within a few months. Uh, we put a down payment on a place, and I bought a brand new house, two thousand square feet. In one of these master plan communities with a golf course that PGA plays on for one hundred sixty thousand dollars. Now, did you look it's like at my that? mortgage right now? <laughs> right. Did you look at that as kind of like you know game over? You're like, this is the family. I'm done with bands. Well, I mean, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I was going to try. You know, that, that's what I was trying to do. You know, Maybe was, put out it, a solo record. It, no, no, no. I mean, like you know, I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to do the, you know. Like, like, let's do the family, you know, got, got the house going on. I had a good job out there. I was making, you know, really good money, and, and it was nothing but going up. I was working for the city of Las Vegas and everything. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, I would have stayed out there and stuff like that. But then once it started falling apart, I was like, look, I'm going to make a one-ditch effort here to see what can happen. Oh, get out of here. That's so I awesome. started calling the guys up. I called up, I think – I think I called up either Mike or Terrence first, and I said, hey, you know, if I come back to Long Island, are you interested in trying to put this thing back together? And, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much Terrence was on board instantly. What was he doing the whole time? I mean, he was doing some odd and end jobs over here and stuff like that. Nothing really. I mean, you know, like he was still writing. He's always writing and everything, but he wasn't in a band or anything like that. Uh, Mike had been messing around with, you know, some stuff where he was doing, you know, different little projects. He was actually working with Guy Marche at the time. Like, they were messing around doing things. So I remember he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm totally in. I reached out to, like, Doug Cerrito and Chris Richards. Uh, You know, it just didn't work out. Like, however, what was going on with them, if they were doing things and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, you know, we pretty much have the foundation here. And I was like, all right, man, I- I'm coming. You know, like, let's let's put this thing together. And Guy was working with Mike at the time, so Guy was like, hey, you know, if if, if Doug's not, you know, g- going to do this, you know, I- I'll do it. I- I'm in. And uh, so sure enough, wow. g- came back here. That's we started, we started, jump, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, so I just got back here, uh. put it together. We started jamming. And then uh, next thing you know, there was huge buzz. It was like, hey, man. You know, people hadn't seen suffocation since 1998, and now it's about 2003. Right. So it's a good five years, and with that, within that short time there, forget it. I mean, we start. We the first tour we did was with uh, Morbid Angel, and uh, we were direct support, and uh, the red man it just blew up. I mean, people were buying merchandise like crazy. We started playing out all the time, and then and then pretty much for about two years solid. We were doing just the band stuff. Uh, like, that's I, all I was doing. I remember going to Nassau Coliseum, uh, watching, I guess it was like Slayer and Pantera, and like Phil Anselmo definitely shouting out Suffocation. Yeah, yeah I mean, oh, yeah, there. yeah. He was just like, yeah, he was like naming the bands. He was like in Suffocation. I was like, oh. yeah, yeah. He's, I, I'm good friends with Phil. Nice. Uh, it, he loves the band. It, it, with him, it started, uh, I think this was back in like 1998, somewhere around there, like like right around that time we were ending or uh, maybe even the Pierce Within mm-hmm. around 95, somewhere in, the, in between those years. So I'm playing, we're playing a show in Texas 
and we're hanging out. You know, I'm playing this show, and I, and I look over, I see this guy on the side of the stage, and I'm like, man, that dude looks fucking familiar, man. I can't <laughs> can't figure out who this guy is, and I'm I'm you know we're playing, and he's he's digging, and when I get off the stage, and I'm like, where do I fucking know you from? And he he's like, Phil, man, Phil Ensemble, man, you guys are fucking amazing. And uh, from that point on, he was a fan. And uh, from that point on, like, we, you know, we became friends. And, uh, you know, I hung out with him a couple of times uh, during football season. Sometimes we hit each other up, talk about the, you know, the, the upcoming season and everything. Right. And, uh, yeah, he's a cool motherfucker. He and, yeah, some, he's awesome. He does some good stuff, like, down there, like, with, like, House Core, right? His label. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, yeah. yeah, we played the, one of the festivals that he oh, does really? down there. Yeah, the House, the house uh, Hardcore, you know, yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's involved in a lot of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally cool dude, man. Yeah, he's awesome. All right. Um and so you get the band back together that I mean like so you guys all get in the room. When did you know that it was just going to work? Like you're just like in I you- mean pretty much when we started jamming, I was like, "Yo, we, like like we haven't missed a beat." Yeah. You know, like like boom, we jumped right into it. Uh a lot of the stuff I you know like like you don't forget that stuff. It's so crazy, man. Like, like I'm like, all right, I haven't sang in five years. First of all, crazy thing was coming back down in you know Long Island and being like, you know, I, I just asked all these guys like, what if I try to start singing and I can't do it anymore? You know, I'm like, this would be nuts. But that was like you hadn't you didn't practice. I didn't even try nothing. No, you no, you, no. I you don't just, do death metal karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> I do when I'm wasted out of my face. You know, uh, but. But yeah, I mean, uh, so you know, I didn't really know and everything. So then we get back here, and then once we started jamming, I was like, "Yo," I was like, "Yeah, we we are right where we started." And what did you notice, like in in that like five years for like the music business? Like, did it change for the better or the worse? Because I, I feel like it got better by two thousand three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It started. What ended up happening is then, yeah, then then I think right around two thousand. That was like the lamb, like 2003 was like the Lamb of God resurgence, and they were citing bands like At the Gates, yeah. you know, stuff like right. that. And they were just well, like, At the Gates definitely influenced you know, a lot of that. Yeah, because generation. in the 90s, like a lot of like that heavy music definitely seemed to like go away, aside from like the Suffocations or Pantera or certain like I that. I mean, Carcass had broke up by then, too. It yeah, was, it was there. Yeah, I Carcass think it just was, went yeah, further yeah. underground, you know. Chuck's, I mean? Chuck from Death was pretty much dying at that point yeah yeah know. yeah so so i mean like like it was it was weird because when we left you know i i, I saw the scene going on a downtrend and then when we came back it was around the napster time i think 98 yeah probably mm-hmm. probably around there and stuff and then but when we when we came back that's when i like the scene was really starting to you know get pumped back up again you know like and then the young kids started like like now you had kids that Never got a chance to see us because, you know, maybe they were 14. And then now five years later, they're 19, 20 or whatever. And now they're like, you know, oh, man, you know, like. Well, I think like, your band influenced a lot of that style. They, you know, I don't know what term. There's so many sub terms for metal now. If it's metal <laughs> core or whatever. but yeah, It's just, like technical death metal, yeah. you know, kind of. But and, that's, and, you guys had that precision where, you know, a lot of other bands are just 100 miles an hour. And you guys had that precision to it. And you heard a lot of those younger acts playing yes. that way. Yeah, yeah and, I mean? and, and a lot of those young bands, too. Like, like we're getting ready. Uh, there's a Black Dahlia tour coming up or whatever. That's when they, I think um, they started around 2000. Yeah, yep. and, and, and Black Dahlia, you know. Uh, we're friends with those guys, and and you know they they they, they were like, yo, you you guys were a huge influence. Yeah, sure I mean, uh, Hapri, Jamie Josta would tell me, uh, you know, he's like he's like you know, I we pretty much stole like rhythms from yeah. you guys, you know, like yeah. like changed it up a little bit, but like he's like you know, you guys were a huge influence and everything. So yeah, I think during that time that we were away, there were a lot of bands that took what we were doing because. It takes time to discover shit. Sometimes yeah. you don't get it right away. Like there's movies that I saw from 20 years ago, you know, that I'm like, oh shit, how did I miss this? Same thing right. with records. Like every year, there's somebody like Mike or whoever that gives a younger kid and like, oh, check out the Suffocation record. And yeah, from there it grows. Yeah, it, exactly. You know, and it, and it, it, I mean, even a story from like, uh, you know, Derek in the band, like when when Effigy came out, you know, and he, and he's he's you know a couple of years younger than all of us and everything, so. When Effigy came out, he had gotten that album, and he was like, uh, you know, I don't know what, what's going on. I don't know if, it, you know, and he handed, he traded it with, like, a friend 
I think for like Alters of Madness or something like that. So then after listening for a while, he was like, he was like, hey man, he's like, can I, get, I, I want the suffocation back. And he's like, and after listening to it a couple of times, then it really sunk in and he was like, yo, this stuff is incredible. Yeah. You know, because I think what happened was at the, at the beginning, some people didn't necessarily understand like, you know, what we were doing and like where we were and, and stuff. Because again, it wasn't, it wasn't just straightforward, you know, it was like, and, and what I, what I took was all the music that I loved because I love the, the breakdowns. I love the speed. The I love the technical. Right, right, right. So yeah. being here on Long Island, like I was telling you earlier, there were so many shows. Every weekend I went to different shows. So I listened to every different type of genre of music. And it was like, yo, I, I, I want to take a little bit of this, some of this, add a spice of this, and boom, put it in a pot. And yeah, suffocation. And that's what it is, is like we're all musicians here. Um, I love, I always hit play on like the people that I'm friends with. Anything that comes out, I want to hit play on because shit just like the, the people that I know still make music and like it, it's inspiring. Like if it's yep. that good, I'm like, shit, now I want to get back in there. Like, yeah. I, I, I got to get back <laughs> in there and do my thing. Um, I know that also um, you did some features too. Like just recently you were on the Car Bomb record. Yes. With Greg Kubaki. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shout yeah, out to Greg yeah. Kubaki. <laughs> mm. um, and then Suicide Silence was another one, right? Yes. Yep, yep. Yeah, so, and, and again, you know, the guys you met on the road and stuff like that, Suicide Silence. I could hear the influence it, in it, it, they were, earlier. Yeah, yeah. They, they definitely told us. They were like, you know, big fans and everything. Uh, you know, Dan Kenny or whatever. You know, uh, me, me and him are both Dallas Cowboy fans and stuff. So, you, you know, like we got that going on <laughs> and whatnot. But, uh, I think Todd Reynolds just died <laughs> <laughs> listening right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just – it's what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, but no, no. So like they they had approached me and stuff because we've done some shows with those guys, and uh, they you know he approached me and he said, hey man, you know, you know we, we want you to you know do some background vocals. And I, was, I was, sure, let's you know let's do it. So uh, yeah, I mean I mean it's always. It's always cool, you know, like you know, to to work with some of the guys that I know and everything. Yeah, it's fun. You're like the elder statesman now of I am. death metal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like the, the main feature guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. But not Great, death metal. Yeah. It's like you know. Would you would you do a feature on uh, like something more rock? Like, it, d did you ever want to? Yeah, like on the Cure. <laughs> like, let's say Robert. <laughs> <Smith. Yeah. laughs> Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, nobody's ever approached, but you know, why not? Like, do you, you know, sing like some ACDC in the car? Like, what do you sing? Like, uh, no, believe it or not, uh. I'm a big, at this point now, you know, like I, I listen to my brutal stuff and everything, and I'm all over the place. But a, a typical Saturday night, you know, uh, me me and my girl hanging at home is, uh, we listen to stuff like Three Dog Night Radio and uh, Looking Glass Radio. Okay. You know, Brandy, you're a fine girl. Yes. What a good <laughs> wife she would be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, like, like that's... That's a lot of stuff that that I listen to, you know, just uh, on on you know on my own time and stuff. But right. I, but I mean I listen to everything. You but know? I'm saying you don't have the urge to like like I mean listen hypothetically speaking to ever put out like a rock record. Like, and, and no, not not really. I mean, okay, yeah. you know, but I I mean. I don't know. You can tell me to shut the fuck up. It's I mean, could it ever are happen? Are you trying to put another band together? <laughs> <laughs> could it ever happen? <laughs> well, well, I I do have I do have an idea for uh, something later on in life. You know, probably when I'm really, you know, on the tail end of everything, and I'm I'm retired out in Vegas, and I, I'm smoking weed all the time, and I and I'm drinking. I got a cocktail in my hand all the time. I'm gonna do. Uh, it's gonna be Mullen in the Mullet Tones. Okay. And uh, we're going to sing Suffocation Lounge style. I like it. So it's exhume awesome. the wretched body from its timeless slumber, thrashing the tomb to reveal what's inside. Hey. <laughs> so it's going to be stuff like that. You know, the big stand-up bass. Vegas the that. big stand-up yeah. bass, wire, wire brushes. <laughs> Got to wear a suit, too. You know? <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like it. I'll be so, looking for that. Okay. Well, yeah. there goes that answers my question. You know. So yeah, yeah. No, that that'll be later on, way down the road, or whatever. You gotcha. know. I also want to touch on your your song. Was it BTK or a Bound Fine. by Torture Kill? Kill? Yeah. yeah, that was used on on History Morty Channel. Channel. Uh, History Channel. Yeah, yeah. How did that come about? So uh, what happened with that was uh, the, 
we had gotten contacted um, <clears throat> by the the producer that was doing that commercial. We he had actually uh, one of the guys that worked on that commercial had done a video with us. He had okay. done the Abomination Re- Reborn video. All right. So what happened was it, when it was shooting that show. That wasn't Adam Wingard, was it? It might. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, because he fucking did your next. That's he right. did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. He did two I, I, of your videos. Yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then, so what ended up happening was, um, when they were getting ready to shoot that show, they were looking for, you know, something heavy. They wanted to represent, you know, that time frame. It was like the dark ages. Yeah, right? the or dark something. ages. Yeah. So they wanted to represent something that was just, you know, brutal, violent. Crazy, say no more. And uh, I, yeah. since he had worked with us doing the video, he's like, "Hey, you know," he's like, "I, I, I know a band here on Long Island. I just shot these guys or whatever, and uh, you know, yeah, I'm. Let's reach it. Let's reach out to them and see if they'd be interested." So they hit us up, and they were like, "Hey, you know, would you be interested in doing this commercial for this?" Day? And we're like, "Fuck we're like, yeah, wow. man!" That, I never, <laughs> never thought that would happen. The History Channel, Call yeah, yeah. Up to that. <laughs> well, I mean, now you know what it is. It's like album sales aren't what they they used to be. So it's like right. now these, it's not frowned upon anymore. Now it's like, okay, you know what? You're not going to buy the record. You're going to str- stream it on Spotify. Right. So therefore, whenever you get that offer, you got to jump on it. Why the sure. fuck not? Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, you know, and then also too, it was just like, yo, yo like a TV commercial. Yeah, like, what, what, when's the next time that suffocation may get exactly. ants to do a TV play commercial? Fucking yeah. death metal. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're not. It's not like you know, like Madonna or some shit. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying? like a car commercial. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Car- 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 Carnival Cruise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Getting rid of li- lust for life. Uh, <laughs> looking for something a little different. Yeah, did you guys ever do a cruise? I know that they do like 70 tons of metal. Yeah, we've done that twice. How fucking 70, awesome 70,000 tons of metal. I mean, it's that. awesome. The first time that we did it, um, I was, uh, I, I, I got, I got wasted. <laughs> Like I, I mean, feel like you have to yeah, on those what, what things. better place uh-huh. to get and, and like you know like the only thing I was worried about is like you know maybe I should wear a life vest the whole time I'm on this thing <laughs> because just in case if I fall off the fucking side like uh-huh. like at least I'll bob in the ocean for a little while until the sharks you get got, me or got whatever a, you got a party in the middle of the boat that's what that's yeah. the problem <laughs> so I mean the way that they do that is uh you play two sets um you know, usually what they do is they'll break it up. You know, you'll have a day off in between the two sets that, that you're going to do. And, I mean, yeah, it's like, you know, there's there's like 40, 40 bands yeah. on this thing or whatever, you know, and 40, 50 bands, and, and that's it. You know, like you're partying with everybody. They, they bill it as it's the ultimate backstage because – Everybody eats in the same spot. Right. Everybody's on the boat, so like you can't go hide in some backstage room. You know, the, like you know, the fans can't hang out with you. Well, that could turn into a nightmare, though, probably. Right. Well, it, it, well what it just turned into was, you know, next thing you know, I mean, I fans are buying me drinks and and just getting me lick it up, and then forget okay. it. I mean, I mean, I'm singing karaoke and falling all over the place, and <laughs> like so, yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, it's uh, it, it was pretty crazy. Are you guys, do you guys share equipment for something like that, or it's yeah, everybody you, brings their own stuff? Usually, they 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 have the back line all set up, and then you just bring you you know like your guitars and and you know like if you have any um, drum stuff, you know they, that's specialized to you. But they have the kit, they have all the the you know the heads and the cabinets and everything like that. Wow. So, mm. but uh, and then, then we just did the last one. Uh, that that just happened, and uh, you know that was pretty awesome. I, I mean, you can't go wrong with it. It's a it's a four day vacation, pretty much, sure. hanging out, going to a nice spot, and yeah, uh, hey. and playing metal music and listening to, and hanging out with metal fans the whole yeah. time. That's cool, man. So yeah, um, the bo- like, what was the what, what what was the lineup on the last one for for that cruise? Just out of curiosity. Uh, let's see. Uh, Anthrax was on there. Um, Overkill. Man, that's. Um, I'm already sold. Like, yeah, 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 in, yeah, yeah. I'm already there. So. Um, and everyone there looking all like uh, gross and 
drunk and like everyone's just hanging out puking and no like, no 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 not, no it's it's not it's not as crazy as that you know like it would i'm not going now but uh <laughs> <laughs> dan terror's only going if they're doing stomp you know World War II, so i love it I skin that hasn't seen the sun in yeah. 30 years <laughs> since asteroids was a video game <laughs> But I mean, I mean, no, it's just it's totally cool, and and I mean, it's just people from all over the place. A lot of Europeans usually end up going, and a lot of people from uh, South America, okay, you know, jump on. on I, the- I think like, I guess because there's like so many, there's so many shows. Because like I said, and I always say that like you know records just, you know that back catalog is just it just doesn't move like it used to. So there's always like these things that you have to do. It's like, okay, now we're going to play on a cruise. So it's like all these things to entice mm. um, because there's so many tours and festivals competing with each other because everyone's like chasing that tour money. So right. something like that just makes sense. It's like, all right, you and guys want to- these bands, these fan base, you know, the fan base grew older. They take cruises now. Yeah. But right. I mean, you yeah. know, that's <laughs> what, it's a vacation, but now I get to hear my favorite band. Yeah. It's like, you know. Yeah, it's, and, and some of them, you know, uh, some of them bring the, the families. You got kids that are on this and everything, you know, like, because, like, you know, think about it. I mean, if you were a suffocation fan, I mean, I, I'm 47 years old. I'm going to be 48. So, you know, you, you have fans out there that are married, families everything so now it's like all right you know hey there's a cruise that they're yeah, playing like, on cool you know like, like uh we'll bring the whole family kids kids get the chance to see you know what dad used to listen to or <laughs> what mom was in the pit you know stage diving or nice. whatever hopefully they don't get urinated on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no that guy's never coming back to a show yeah yeah yeah, and yeah. If, he, if he is he's in the pool peeing <laughs> <laughs> he's got like a picture hung up like a wanted yeah. sign <laughs> so um all right you, you know another thing that I wanted to touch on before we finish is um, the Long Island uh, Music Hall of Fame. You guys are in there. Yes. What yeah. A, yeah. What yeah. a trip. What, how- I mean, that, that's pretty amazing. Um, you know, the we, we're the we're the first death metal, you know, band to to get in, and uh, I mean, it's a huge honor. It was like you know they they contacted us. Um, you know, there was some talk about it and everything, and and I guess you know they contacted us to, and. The success that we've had over the years, they were like, you know, I mean, hey, man, you know, you guys are worthy to be in this. I mean, you know, you've put out numerous albums. I think, you know, we're on like eight albums. We've toured the world. And, uh, yeah, they they approached us. And, I mean, it was pretty cool, you know, to, to actually go to – I mean, we're getting in at the same time. We were hanging out with Salt and Pepper yeah. and uh, Taylor Dane. <laughs> And like the guy from the Love and Spoonfuls and stuff, you know, and like, wow. and then, and then it's like suffocation, you know. Yeah. So, but and w- would you guys get like an email to your management or something? Like, yeah, I mean, I guess they they had contacted you know management and stuff like that, or or I don't know if she reached out to them and everything like that first, and and then yeah, just sort of corresponding. And then, did you believe it when they told you? <laughs> like, you're like, no, hey. I mean, I, I was like, really, man, and like this is crazy. Like, we're gonna be. It, like in the Hall of Fame for Long Island, and uh, you know, and there was like a like a reception type thing for it. Yeah, yeah, they 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 did a show over at the Paramount, and uh, you know, so, some of the bands had played and, and stuff like that. We didn't play, no, no, no. But it was cool though when we did walk out. I think like the they had like the little band, you know, that's there like with strings and stuff like that, or or, or whatever. And they played like a little bit of like a montage of, of just oh, yes. like yeah, yeah, like like a little uh, yeah, yeah. So it was, Oh, pretty cool. awesome. it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool, and then we had um, you know our good friend uh, Keith, you know Fingers from uh, Metal Shop. Okay. Uh, he's the one who did our our you know induction speech yeah. or whatever for us because you know uh, I'm good friends with him and and he's one of the first guys that got us on the radio. You know, here back in Long Island when we were kids, yeah, I remember and we were that just name. yeah, 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 uh, you, always, yeah. You know, yeah. Fingers from Metal Shop. I mean, whenever that was the like the last time I went to go see Live After Death. The Maiden Tribute Band, yeah. like <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think he was. Uh, I think it was like joined with the uh, whatever radio. Yeah, yeah. It, it, WBAB. You know, so. he, he did. A, it does a lot of stuff with them and everything. And you know, so like, I mean, you know, it it, it was cool. It was like, all right, you know, like, nice. and he was like, yeah, man, I, I'll I'll definitely do it. So wow. now, now, uh, was the induction before or after um, Bedlam? I. Uh, Let's see. It was before. Before. Yeah, yeah. And then, so then you you make a, what's the the name of the Bedlam? Pinnacle of Bedlam. Pinnacle of Bedlam. Um, And that's the last record that you're on, right, basically? No, no, I just did the new one. Oh, did you? Yeah. But you don't do the live. 
No, I, 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 I tour, I've right? done some of the some of the live oh, shows with it, right. but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I just did you know the new album and everything, and it, and then Kevin, you know, who's singing Kevin Muller. Uh, who sings when I'm not there and everything, and he's he's been doing a lot of the main tour, and uh, he did uh, uh, some of the background stuff on, on the new album as well. Okay, that's and one of my top of 2017. That's right. Yeah, we man. we did a Killer. we did an episode where we <laughs> did top of 2017, and that Absolutely. was on there. That's on thank our, you. That's on our playlist. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so just real quick, like to touch upon it, like how did you come to that conclusion? And it must have been like, uh... I mean, yeah, you know, like. Uh, I enjoy playing the shows, um, but just it, you know, where I'm at and, and everything and, and at this part of my life, you know, I, I can't do the full time tour it. anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, what I started noticing as, as you continue to do the full time tour and is, is the voice, even though it's there, but if you, if I start doing it long, a lot over and over again, you know, it's, it's, it's not as, crazy is it it's not as strong i guess as it used to be and everything so i i started seeing that you know hey you know like 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 when when your voice starts telling you hey you know okay yeah, you can do it but you may not be able to do 60 shows at a clip or whatever and this that you know like i, I don't want to i don't ever want to get to the point where i'm out on the road and now i'm like hey yeah, man i, I can't, can't sing perform. tonight right Hey man, I can't. I you know, I'm sorry. You guys are gonna have to like do it without me and stuff like that. So. That's crazy, yeah. Because you'll be in like Southeast Asia, and it's like, oh no, we can't do the show. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like, and, and I mean, it, it's never happened yet. You know, and and I, I don't want it to ever be that where you know I'm like, hey man, you know, like sorry, but you know, I blew it out, or or it's just it's completely hoarse and dead and, and I don't want to give you a, you know, a, a bad show where right. I sound like shit, yeah, yeah. you know? Sure. Do you, do you miss the, the traveling? Uh, I, I mean, some of it I do, but it, 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 again, there's a lot of the traveling that I do not fucking miss one bit. <laughs> okay. Those long flights where you're on the plane for like 16 hours. No one draws little circles on your kneecap. With yeah. The no, 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 <laughs> no, I, 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 Snapped it you know, <laughs> quick. In my defense, I was about yeah. thirteen, so still, but you could still learn how to, you know, snap decks. <laughs> nice, you know. All right, all right. <laughs> no, I needed you in my corner, then. You know, <laughs> nothing, uh, nothing. The uh, the old wood chipper wouldn't fix. You there know? you go. There you go. <laughs> you know. So uh, actually, actually, that's another business venture that I'm looking into. Is it you know because you, you have your you, you have your traditional funerals. And stuff you have, you know. Oh, your, I like where this is going. Okay, so so, go <laughs> so it's going to be the uh, the Mullen special, you know. So, but but you have your traditional funerals, you know, where you either get buried in the ground, and and who the fuck wants that, right? Yeah. You're no gonna one. sit, you're gonna sit in a goddamn box and rot, yeah. You know, and just for what, like you know, or cremation, right. which is you know that's a fan favorite. There, you know, you just <laughs> get get tossed in there, and, and like you know. It, 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 pretty much that's how I'm going to go unless if they can make the Mullen special happen. But I want to be cremated. So this way, you know, like you could take a little bit of me, put you in the, in the ash, like in a car ashtray and drive around with me and stuff. Okay. You know, like, hey, Frank, yeah, check this out. You know, we'll go with the air. And it's, you know, like, yeah, you know, like you could, you, you could, could take me along with you. You could smoke a little bit of me Why or something. You, get to, you could sprinkle some on every piece of vinyl. True. You know, like no. uh, for for the new record, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you know, take you on tour, and then <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 that would take... that wouldn't be bad traveling, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. But the Mullen special, and and and, and th- this is the cheap one. You, you know, they like this doesn't cost you a whole lot. It costs you the price of the wood chip, the, the the rental of the wood chipper. Okay, and what you do is you get the whole family along there. You chop up your beloved one into you know into you know pieces you know like like you know like good sized pieces and stuff like that and everybody gets a chance to throw you in a wood chipper and <laughs> spread you all over the place so like grand you know like grandma's out there like right. oh you know it's so I'm so sad to see you go you know like you'd have to designate there could be fights with the family and what 
body part. Yeah, like, right. Like every, right, every, everyone wants the breast. Want that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the breast. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No yeah. one wants the like the I'm thigh. Stuck with the, yeah. ass. No. the Adam's apple. Like I get the you know, ass. Yeah. And, and and you know, if you want, if you really want to go the full on experience, you can all just kinda of hang out there and then you all get get a little splatter <laughs> of, of your like a you know yeah, 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 nice. yeah. You can sell like ponchos too. Right. You, you know, that, like man. like but but that's that's the Mullen special right I, I, there. I, the... I think the the lounge singing part would really go good with that. <laughs> yes, like know? a combo right there. Like a combo. Yeah, right. Yes. Playing in the background, yeah. and then wow. what I want to do, like when I die, is I I want to get thrown into like a a container with like a hundred other dead bodies, and like you know, like that claw that you throw the twenty five cents in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I want to get picked up by the claw. <laughs> And just thrown <laughs> into the coffin, but like I want like everyone there. There's like a hundred people. Like you, right. you know, un- no one could leave the funeral until someone gets me in that claw and throws <laughs> me in the coffin. Nobody ever. That shit never works, though. No, nah. they're all night <laughs> trying to get no. you up. up in yeah, the yeah, yeah. So somebody will spend you know like two hundred bucks trying to just get you out of the thing, and it, you know they're like, oh man, who's got any more dollars yeah. left over? Like I, I'm, we're all out of money. Uh, I don't want any. And the cum body's quarters. gonna rot. It's gonna come <laughs> apart. What if you only get a piece of you or something? Yeah. Does that count? <laughs> no. I don't want any comp quarters either. I want everyone to just get... I don't give a shit if you got to go to 7-Eleven and get more quarters. Do you get, like, tickets? Like, it, like when you do ski ball or something? Nice. Can you get a prize afterwards? No. No. Fuck, no. You get to go home. I ain't going. <laughs> you get to... <laughs> so, I'm uh, going with the wood chipper. Nice. I, I still feel... I like it. Got to let him borrow wood chip massacre. That fucking... <laughs> Class. Great movie. Or uh, how about uh, Dale and Tucker versus Evil? Great movie. Oh, so good. You Great know, movie. When he's, tra- he's trying to help him out of the so woodshed because he, 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 he so came good. watching in there no. and they're like, oh my God, he's good. You know, great movie. That no, or Fargo. Yeah. Those are the two. Wood yeah. Chipper. No, yeah. The, well, yeah, yeah. Put yeah. wood chippers on the map. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely put wood chippers on the map. So, um,. All right, I guess we're, we're we're good with like the the music portion. Like you just put out a record. I had no idea that you fucking did sing yes. on it. Yeah, yep. I'm a big poser. It's fucking killer. <laughs> um, but just Get real that. quick, like, do you want to just give me? Because I'm I'm curious. Anytime somebody comes in and and the, whatever they're they're involved in, I love to know the basis of it. Like I want to know the influences. So can you give me like your five vocalists that influenced you the most? Five vocalists. I mean, uh, I I definitely have to go with Barney. Okay. Uh, you know, Barney Funny. Greenway from Napalm Death. Um, I'd have to go with, um, you know, John Tardy from Obituary. Okay. Um, I mean, it's yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's hard. Like, I'm trying to. There, there wasn't too many. I mean, Chris Barnes definitely as well. Like, like he was, you know, because he was right before us. There was a guy TJ from Baphomet, you know, stuff like. That. But yeah, I mean, there, there were a few guys that I heard it, and especially yeah, like Barney and Chris Barnes, and I was like, that's 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 where I want to sound. Like, like I want I want the guttural, and I want you know the low end to it. I definitely wasn't a guy that wanted to be, you know, high end and the, you know the, the you know the really like, Rob you know, the, yeah, yeah. Or, or the or the high screaming and stuff like that. Like I, I didn't want that. You know, I was like, I was like, I, I want this to be low, guttural, and sound like you know just brutal. Like well, it just, matches the the music. It matches the instruments. It complements it perfectly. You know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, that's like and, and that's it. you know because it, I mean it could have went to one of two ways because you know there there are a lot of bands out there that you know have more of the mid range or add some of the high ends to it and and the band still can sound you know good mm-hmm. and and but I was like yo I want the band to sound this way and I want to be at the at the pits of hell. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, accomplished. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Um, all right, cool. So uh, we always do a top five with everyone here. I know that um, maybe uh, you don't have yours, but we're, we'll, we'll still just do it anyway. Um, Toby Hooper, the uh, famous horror director, I guess just died like right, like last yeah, week or some yeah. shit. Yes. Another yes. one. Another one, right? Romero. Wes Craven. Wes Craven. Yeah. Where's John yeah. Carpenter? Yeah, <laughs> someone keep an eye on John Carpenter. He's playing that. soon, so let him at least do the show. Well, <laughs> an eye on that motherfucker. Speaking of real quick, like Adam Wingard, who directed two of of uh, Suffocation videos, mm-hmm. guy 
I mean, he's he's definitely one of like the future dudes. Absolutely. You're next. I I love the guest. Yeah. Oh, um, I love that movie. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Great soundtrack. So like, he, the, as the uh, as the old ones go, the new ones come in. True. So, right. This is true. You know. Um. Yeah. Real quick. Any any newer bands that that fucking you want you want to shout out that that you feel are are kind of like carrying that death metal torch. Uh. Not. Uh, Besides revocation. <laughs> yeah, revocation's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I, I like, I like some of the stuff that's, all, you know, like a little off kilter, and that's why, you know, I enjoy doing the car bomb stuff mm. and everything. You know, I, I definitely, it, it, I, I like the music direction and everything that those guys are very off kilter. Yeah. So yeah. So all right, cool. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna go through our top five um, favorite Tobe Hooper, Toby Hooper uh, movie moments. So basically anything from any of the movies that really sticks out to you. And then we're going to go around. So if, if you want to add, then feel free. I'm sure you, you got some shit to say. Right. So. Uh, Langan, you want to do number five? Uh, number five. I got a lot of these are interchangeable. But um, uh, I had Salem's Lot. Okay. When the, that kid's floating outside the window. Yeah. yeah. Can be look a little cheesy now, obviously, but when you were a young man watching The that, head vampire a, definitely looks a little, a little cheesy. Creepy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like a... Poor man's Nosferatu. <laughs> yeah, totally. a little bit. Like half Blue Man Group. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> I mean totally. that, that movie was fucking yeah. scary shit back then. The Salem's it. It Lot, the, you know the original, absolutely original, like only for TV too. Yes. I think right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and and I don't think it was as good from what I remember the TV yeah. one. Right. You know, I, I mean they, they did another one. Yes, and that was but but the original one. Right. Like I just remember that creeped out kid or whatever. Yeah, he, he was tapping on the, yeah, window, tapping and on the window and it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, fuck yeah. it, let him in, right? Uh, yeah, dumbass. But yeah, that's uh, that's your number five. Sticks with me. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go and then okay. maybe yeah. we'll. No, no, you go and then we'll we'll, we'll let Frank go last after okay. he hears our nonsense. Okay. Uh, <laughs> number five, I did Poltergeist. I kind of started with a more comedic uh, aspect, and I remember the uh, the guy riding his ten speed with like the, <laughs> with the case of beer, <laughs> going to his buddy's house to watch it, and the fucking kid uh, does the RC car, and then uh, you know spills the beer and runs back into the house, and half of the case is exploding and everything, and then they're watching the football game, and then the football game goes to like fucking uh, Mister Rogers. Because the guy next door has the same remote control, and then <laughs> they fucking start screaming at each other. And so I, I don't know. I always, I always found that fucking scene amusing, so yeah, that always man. stuck with me. That scene, fantastic. Pol- Poltergeist is amazing. I mean, uh, uh, you know the uh, what was it? The old man. You know, Carolyn, yes. nah. come to the light, nah. Carolyn. Nah, I love that dude. That, that dude guy. was like dying of cancer <laughs> when he shot that movie. That's oh, why he looks he, so uh, emaciated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when he's walking in the rain, hey, oh Carolina. fuck that! That was Which the one was second, that one, second one. Second one. Uh, yeah. He, yeah. So, so that's like just really good casting, yeah. basically. Because once there's certain people who just like look like Angus, like for, uh, from uh, Scrim, like, yeah, from Fan, Fine, Phantasm, me yeah, yeah, Angus Scrim, Phantasm, Phantasm. Oh. the tall <laughs> man, yeah, yeah, just like any like yeah. certain casting, like this guy here, which I'm gonna say number five, right. uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Hitchhiker. Yeah. Mm. Okay, like when this motherfucker, like, <laughs> he, here it is, and I guess like you know it's like seventy four, it's the hippie era. I guess right. you pick up hitchhikers and sure. you know it's a simpler time. Yeah, yeah. Franklin being <laughs> fucking anno- annoying oh. as shit, but they pick this motherfucker up, and he has this like birthmark on yeah. his face. He has this like twitch going on. Mm-hmm. He even has a band aid. <laughs> Which I would just look at, and it was just so like he was just so disgusting looking <laughs> that it felt like it wasn't a movie. It felt like this guy, yeah. like he didn't feel like an actor. It wasn't like no. you know, it wasn't like uh, John Cusack playing the hitchhiker. It That's was why like, that movie works so well forever because yeah. no. it doesn't so feel fucking like dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. he t- and then he takes the razor blade yep. yes. and he cuts his hand. Right. And, and like everyone's just sitting there like, okay, this is awkward. Like how do we get this fucking lunatic out of the fucking car? And as a kid just watching that, it made me feel very uncomfortable. Like uh kind of like it wasn't like Freddy Kind of like when that dude that guy was fingering your knee. Yeah. Nice. Exactly. Uncomfortable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Right? Yeah. Uh. The same but different. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it, it it wasn't like a, this monster thing. It was like a like a human just being disgusting and gross. So it just fucking worked. <laughs> like I'm like, get this guy out of the car, and never in the movie again. So that would be number five. So did you want to add anything, Frank, or did you? Just I, I just want I just want to add any anything to do with Leatherface. I mean, Leatherface is one of the most iconic horror villains sure. that was out there. And I mean, like, what better villain? I mean, to to cut the skin and wear it on your face, like a whole face piece of skin, like that's just, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, like that's... I never I, noticed either... That's a, that's a good guy right there, you know? He's, <laughs> and, he, 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 you know what? And what it does, what it shows you is... His attention to detail to make sure he gets it right. Right, cuts and the right Yeah, size. yeah, yeah. You got to admire that. You, you got to admire. Don't waste anything. Nah. No, they eat it no, and no. He wears it for a fashion. Exactly. Nah. Yeah. That, could be, that guy <laughs> would be online for the wood chipper. He'll get the wood chipper special. <laughs> and it gets, you know, check it out. I mean, like you know, he can he can have a he could actually really market this and have a whole different like he could have a whole line you know he doesn't have to go out like the same dude every time you know right. like hey I, I, movie, I'll go out like the old man right. or today maybe I, I maybe I'm feeling a little a little feminine maybe I'll put on her face yeah. you know maybe I'll he did in the movie, right? Oh, like, uh, he would just change his face. yeah that was the part two when he had can know. I get a clarification Mike Randall didn't didn't like <laughs> Didn't like, uh, <laughs> didn't like Leatherface change like his that was the mask McConaughey one. Through. I think the McConaughey one he changed. I feel like them, he he they? changed it a lot because he wears a dress in that, that one. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. That... Was mostly chop top, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, he wore he wore yeah. the skin of that uh, the other radio station dude in part two. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, oh, LG. We'll, we'll we'll get that's there. A, LG. All yeah. right. So yeah. number yeah, number four. Guy. Okay. Number four, uh, Invaders from Mars. Yeah. That teacher's got the frog legs in yeah. her mouth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right? Yeah, I remember definitely. That? I remember watching as a kid, and the kid, it's, I love, like, body snatcher kind of movies, like the faculty and Invasion of the Body that Snatchers. That was, the faculty where there's a was whole, such a sucker for the faculty. Where there's, like, a whole conspiracy going on, and there's, like, five people trying to figure out why everybody's all fucking weird and shit, and that's right. kind of like that, and that kid walks around that room, and that fucking teacher's got that fucking frog thing in her mouth. <laughs> I'll never forget it. Yeah, you can't, so. Um, that's number four, Parker, number four. Uh, I didn't really have a scene, but the the Mangler, that movie, The Mangler, that he did, yeah. uh, I just love it. There's Robert Englund with the, uh, he's got, like, the double crutches, and he's got the one eye, and then... Uh, he's got the swollen face look. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. What year was that? That was 95. Yeah. Okay, and then okay. uh, Ted Levine from, you know... That's right. You know, that, Sounds the, of the Lambs. The Dick Tucker. Yes. Buffalo. Um, Buffalo, Buffalo Bill. Bill. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh, wait. Was, she, was she a great big fat person? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so not not a specific scene, but I just love that fucking movie. So, I never watched it. Did you yeah. watch it? The Mangler. No, no, I never I did. Three There's three. Of there them, is yeah. three of them. Mang- yeah. Mangler reborn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I've seen it for about fifty years. Nah. It's yeah. about like a killer laundromat. To make yeah, a long yeah, story awesome. short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So nice. I'm, I'm intrigued. Yeah. All right, my number four is uh, the movie Life Force, mm-hmm. nice. a Canon Good gem. Movie. Yep. Can- like first wait, of all, Life Force is that the one with tits? <laughs> wait, wait. No, I don't. It, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, like, I believe. It. Is that the one they were like space vampires yes. Yes. and yes. stuff? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And and you're exactly right. Like, tits. The, yeah, the, I, I the remember. Most Amazing body on yeah. a human being, besides my girlfriend, of course. <laughs> no, I, 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 good cover. She don't listen. I, 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 <laughs> I do remember that movie, though. Yes, yes. A um, there's a scene in it where, like, um, I guess the vampire sucked the life out of this. Uh, uh, it's. So, <laughs> just like soldier breastfeeding, dude, right? So they, they were about to do the aut- the autopsy on him, and uh, as soon as the scalpel gets close to him, and this is like prosthetic genius, like there, it's just so fucking creepy. He wakes up and he's just like, oh, oh, and he starts like pointing to the doctor, and I guess the doctor is in that trance, mm-hmm. whatever you know, swag the vampire has, right? And then the fucking motherfucking thing on the fucking uh, on the on the the gurney thing takes the doctor and sucks the life out of him and just rejuvenates right. Right. and then he just drops his corpse like it, this happens yeah, within yeah. like the first like 15 or 20 minutes right, and you're right. just like 
Wow. Kind of Canon's finest. Yeah, yeah it, really it was, and it was like a $12 million budget. Like, I mean, it bombed, of course. But oh. <laughs> I, mean, I thought it was good. Yeah. Well, I think this whole table, yeah. definitely. It's in Everyone the L section, right? Everyone in this right? basement <laughs> likes it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's five people, so that's my number four. Number well, three? The, yeah. The, the Mangler Stephen King short story? Yes. Too? Yep. yep. Uh, no, no, we're trying to remember it. Like, yep. Wow. Yeah. Right. So i got to watch that. Uh, <laughs> My number three was the the end scene of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre when he's spinning around, the sun's setting, he's got the chainsaw, the girls hysterically. Yes. That shot is just perfect. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's like Criterion Collection quality. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's like spinning around. <laughs> yeah. The sun's, it's perfect. Oh. He's it's always magnetic. spinning that chainsaw, you yeah. know? It's amazing he doesn't cut himself. Well, he did. He I dropped he it did. on. He, well, dro- he, he did, dropped, right? He dropped it on his leg. Yep. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. All right. That's so. why he was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make you mad. I so. hope that truck driver at least got like an HJ or something for like pulling over and helping that chick. <laughs> HJ. <laughs> something. How about a Andy, BJ? Something, Jesus man. Christ, an HJ. That's like a finger bear. fucking kneecap yeah. or yeah. something. Jesus. Yeah. It was a big boy, so. He know. was wearing shorts. Nah. <laughs> Parker, number three, Tobe, Toby Hooper. Number movie three, movie. I did The Fun House. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's right. Um, movie. Movie's cool. I, I rewatched it this week and uh, it's. You know, there's a clown on the cover, but One of my it's obviously favorite covers ever. yeah, not what you would it. think. And then you know, th- this kid running around a Frankenstein mask, but uh. This awkward scene that I never really picked up on. It was one of the first scenes in the movie, and just you see, you know, the older sister in the shower. Yo, right in the beginning. Right in the beginning. It's fine as hell. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Uh, Shout out to that sister. who's probably like, yeah, 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 yeah. And she had tits too. Um, <laughs> and the kid takes the mask off, and it's a little brother, and he's just like still standing there, like fucking looking at her tits and it was just so awkward but in, like, right. in, a, in a nice way <laughs> right right like abc's it, after school special nice way it was the, so. it was awkward in like an 80s yeah way. right well so. it's different in the 80s that was okay. yeah, so yeah. that was number three Every, for me. everything it's okay to look at yeah just, nah. just, uh, <laughs> as long so. as he got like a permission slip it was all right number yeah. three for me uh i'm gonna bring it to another canon movie and i think it might have been the last one that he did for them uh, the invaders from mars mm-hmm. as well um. So once again, this is kind of like a aliens turning people into, I guess, kind of zombies, but mm-hmm. not really like pod people. Fucking what? Zombieish? Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Body snatching. Um. So the main dude, he's actually Karen Black's son. Karen Black's in the movie too. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um. So as a kid, just like the end of Time Bandits, when the parents <laughs> disappear. Oh. Great fucking movie. Um, the time bend. Oh. Right? Oh, oh, so love like, it. Love you, it. Yeah. it. The fucking microwave blows up. Exactly. Uh, great movie. <laughs> so um, as a kid, you're so used to having like your parents always be there um, and kind of like protect you in certain things. Uh, so like the beginning of the movie, like the dad, I guess, goes over the hill. Starts acting weird at breakfast and stuff like that. And uh, I just remember watching it and thinking, like, holy shit. It's like he can't trust his parents during breakfast. And he's, like, Mm -hmm. fucking, like, pouring, like, salt or something. Like, that just, like, this is, like, within the first eight minutes. And that that set the tone for the movie that the kid was going to be on his, like, on his own. Right. So completely. And then from there, the mom gets it. And then when brings it to the scene that you mentioned right. where the teacher so at that point no one can these trust are, anybody yeah so like right. like i remember being i guess i was eight watching it and thinking like ah shit like you it was one of those things that affected me internally because i guess you just kind of look for adults at that point to kind of like save you from that mess right. and they're like he, supermen to you at that point yeah like yeah definitely so gotcha Shout out to to adults. One day. <laughs> one day. I'm going to be one one day. One day I'm going to be one. So what's your number two, Langan? Number two is the whole uh, chop top scene in part two in the radio station. Yeah, I, I would definitely yeah. say. I, would, I was I was going to mention that. It's yeah, yeah, so you have great. to. Where like he's just picking away. He's heating up the. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yep. But it, it's such a. The best. Mosley is so good in it. It's like the best role he ever did. I mean, he's perfect in it. But uh, right, it's such a slow build slow. to something awful. You know is going to happen. But right, when, right. 
and it's just him talking about Iron Butterfly and all that shit. And he's like, <laughs> oh, it's heavy, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, E-X-I-T. Uh, yeah. it's, like, it's up there. I don't know. It's a perfect scene. Shelf. It's a. It's, it's uh, per Like, you just know. And he's like sitting there with that. F- like, because at first you're like, why does this guy have a fucking hanger that he's lighting on fire? <laughs> right, that he's, yeah, yeah. Scratching. <laughs> yeah. Scratching at his plate. It's yeah. hard. And then, like, I love the beginning, too. Like, Bye. The beginning, <laughs> <laughs> the beginning with those two fucking rich kid yuppies. That oh were, yeah. yeah, they were like dicks for no reason. <laughs> like right. they were like shooting, and then they get to this bridge where I guess like uh, Leatherface is at, and the bridge is probably like the size of this table. Mm-hmm. But the scene in the movie, the bridge, <laughs> it's, it's like it's like the GW. It's, just <laughs> yeah. on, on. it's like ten of those, and it just like they're still on the bridge yet somehow is going like, the, like seventy five go- miles an hour. You figured, <laughs> you figured eventually they would have gone off the bridge, but uh, no, no, not at all. So yeah, no, all right. that, that's a that's a great one, man. Parker number two. I did uh, original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, kind of back to the comedic side again. I love the scene that they pull into the the gas station and they're like asking for directions. And uh, he was the—I don't even know if he had a name in the first one, but the second one he was known as like "quote unquote" the cook when he won the uh, the, oh, chili? the Dray- chili championship. Drayton, yeah, Drayton Sawyer, yeah. Like and then the other shell, guy who, <laughs> yeah, the the other guy who didn't even fucking make it, he comes over and starts washing the van or whatever. And then they're asking him for uh, asking the guy for more directions, and then you know they kind of pull up a little bit, and then the guy stops washing the van. And then they keep asking him questions, and the guy gets up and just starts washing the van again. So I don't know that always just fucking kind of made me fucking crack up when I was a kid. <laughs> so. All right, so my number two Toby Hooper movie moment: um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. Um, so the ending. Like just the very ending, like they're like all this chaos happens, everything is going on down there. It's a crazy ending. Very, yeah. So stretch. Yep. Right. Is like climbing up this ladder, and um, Chop Top is behind her, and he's like slashing Cutting her. Cutting the shit out of her. Like, yeah. there's something about getting cut with a fucking razor that's yeah, disgusting. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. <laughs> I've like you're like you just feel that flesh. Because yeah. like I've gotten cut with right. it. Wow. Um, so going up, going up, and then she gets to fucking like that corpse with like the chainsaw. Yeah. Grandma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's just like sitting there and then she's like, uh, okay. And then uh, she like comes uh, over uh, to like the chainsaw and then this fucking like corpse just uh, like wakes up or like titties hanging yeah, out. Great set of t- yeah, great tits. <laughs> they, those tits right? did not deteriorate. No, so. no. <laughs> Definitely. So she takes the chainsaw and he's losing his mind. He's like, you hog bitch. Then he starts fucking. Good band name, Hog Bitch. He oh, let me write that down. And, get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like trying to start this piece of shit, like hundred year old chainsaw, while he's like slashing her back. Constantly. Yeah, like, yeah, over yeah. And, and at some point, you got to think to yourself, like maybe you should just move, yeah. do something. Try no, she's, another technique. Yeah, for yeah. The chainsaw. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you just pick up, the, like, swing it or at him? Kick him. It, 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 the... Is it? Is this? Uh, this is the one with the. Uh, Matthew McConaughey was it? No, that no, was, that was, was one that's four. Hopper. Dennis Hopper. Uh, okay, bat shit craziest. Wow. Got yeah. Um. So yeah. So then you know, obviously the chainsaw starts up. Of course, she slices his. Uh, I mean, still. He, yeah, yeah. He probably sliced her like eight, eighty times. Uh, 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 at a certain point, you're like, does this thing have gas in it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm wasting my time. I just, yeah. I just ripped it off a hundred year old corpse. Maybe nah, it doesn't work. Titties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, she she was just she was in. She was like, fuck it. Uh-huh. So, um, and then she rips open his guts, and then she starts swinging it around, uh-huh. just like uh, the ending of the first one, right. which I guess is yeah. like mm, there's something tired. about like horror, right. there was something about horror movies that just always wanted to like pass the torch. So maybe it made you think like, oh, maybe now she's going to be the killer. Well, they had to set it up that way, and I think it was like. They, it's all about they the would sequel. make a sequel that had that was very different. Obviously, it was like Three Stooges compared yeah. to the first one. The yes. Brothers. So, like, let's just throw in that scene at the end to tie it. So yeah. Like, it's part of the 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 whole series. Yeah. She's gonna swing it around. Oh, that's just like the first movie. Yeah, just like the first one. sequel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, if Toby Hooper was alive, I'd ask him about that. Yeah. Uh, was. So, mm. number two, Parker. No, my number one, isn't it? Oh. Uh, no, two. No, you, you gave just, it two. Yeah. And now it's... So you oh. do your one. Wow. There you are. Uh, Told you I can't count. <laughs> <laughs> it's episode 30. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, my number one is Texas Chainsaw 1 when uh, the guy goes in the house 
gets hit with the hammer. Big steel door. And slams that door. The sound of the door slamming. And, <laughs> and the fact that, like, uh, before, I mean, there's been other gory movies. Not that Texas Chainsaw really isn't a gory movie, no. per se. But yeah, yeah. That, not... that guy having the seizure after he gets hit with the hammer. Yeah, oh, yeah, around, yeah, yeah. You yeah. didn't see that <laughs> no. shit. And that's kind of what would happen. If yeah, you yeah. Kind of took one on the melon mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, that, and then just drags him in, and bam! Yeah. That fucking. It's just it's, brutal and quick. There's nothing. It's just. Yeah. Then you're. It doesn't show you the rest. You, no. you, yeah. Your mind is wondering what's just going flapping on. Flapping around, and then, yeah, and then you get fish. taken away. Yeah. It's, it's fucking psycho shower it, scene, man. Yeah. And I don't see an ounce of blood. It's. Uh, and then and then you come back out later on and. Good old Leatherface has your face on, right? So yeah. That's it. <laughs> uh, at least he puts it to use. That's right. <laughs> uh, Parker number one. There's only so many lampshades. You <laughs> You're <laughs> right. I got to use my backup because you actually used my uh, for the you know the the Texas Chainsaw Titty thing that you just went into with the chainsaw. So oh. I got I got yeah, yeah. That, that was my number one. But I got to use <laughs> I got to use my backup and I got to go with uh, and this is. A real fact, because I had to look it up after I found this. I'm like, there's no way in fucking hell. How did I not know this? And I'm going to have to go with Billy Idol Dancing With Myself video. Yes. Oh, wow. That's true, yeah. correct? All right. Yeah, there you go. He directed that? Yeah. Wow. Really? And got nominated for an award for it. That's a great song. Fun fact. <laughs> wow. You like that song? I just yeah. I threw I, <laughs> th- I threw it song. we're doing we're doing we're doing Halloween so, uh, sh- uh, sets uh, and I threw that on the set. There so you go. I got a re- badass song. Nah, it is a great I, song. I had no idea. Did, nah, me either. Well, there you IMDb. Go. Wow. Well, he, I know. he like his career, you know, like he he had some some good stuff, but like holy shit, like I I, I think after like the Life Force and Invaders from Mars, he did like one Tales from the Crypt episode too. I know, and then it he did a just, Masters of Horror. right? Yeah, he did yep. two. And then the other movie that the gen. not a lot of people mention is Eaten Alive. Eaten Alive. Mm. That, that was 77. That, bad. that was right I mean, after he Texas had Chainsaw. A, he had an odd mm. career. You know what I mean? And it's kind of odd, too, because what Spielberg produced uh, Poltergeist. Poltergeist. And then he, right. you figure he would have directed it. Why did he pick? I, I don't mm. know. It's an interesting yeah, definitely. story. Oh. Um, all right, so my number one, I think, is the ultimate... Um, scene that he ever shot completely like madness um, and it's the the dinner scene in Texas uh, Chainsaw Massacre yeah I, I was gonna say complete yeah, madness yeah. Like, dinner scene she, just she wakes up there's like a fucking chicken like mm. a, <laughs> game over right there alright cause chicken's alive so uh, she was right. vegetarian yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat, vegetarian no, even if you were gonna vegan. eat it no. eventually you know what I'm saying yeah, like, so she wakes up and uh, the shots that he uses are like POV but then mm-hmm. it switches to her eyeball, yeah, and it's just like so frantic, and like uh, the the older dude Drayton is like laughing, and he has these weird teeth, and it's mm-hmm. like so. You could tell, like that. I mean, obviously, you could disturbing. Tell, it just right. really was, man. And you the know? grandpa with the well, hammer. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, with that, yeah. They, they, they get uh. they get they get the hammer. And like, and, and and they're like, go ahead, hit her again, yeah. and, and and like he keeps missing, right? Right? Does he? Uh, he's yeah. dropping a hammer and stuff. And Missed it, like eight, and then that one that hits, you see like this like huge like wound on her head. Yeah, yeah. And then she just like fucking like runs out. But like that scene, um, you know, once you're a horror director and you come up with that, I mean, like you know, that's your legacy. Like that's it. Like you you couldn't really top that. That's why uh, that. that- that movie was so important to yeah. the history of horror. I mean, it's 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 a perfect film. It it really is. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't a one hit wonder, but I mean, you know, he kind of was. He peaked early. He peaked early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, like you know what a peak. Yeah, I mean, oh, absolutely. Legend. It's 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 arguably Every part of it. It's arguably the greatest horror movie ever. Arguably, right you from can the, argue the John Larroquette fucking intro, the voiceover. I'm there. Like, Dan, I, I love his. Yeah. yeah, shout out to shout Dan Fielding. <laughs> so. Night Court. What? Nice. Yeah. Great show. Better. Like the noise through the camera flashing yep. going off the Yeah. Screen. yeah. They use that in like every horror commercial now. Yeah. Do they? That fucking sound. You uh-huh. know what the sound he's talking about? Yeah. Of the yeah. flash? Yeah, yeah. You hear that so but, Yeah, yeah. Much. Um, And then I know that the dude from Inside, which is like one of the best horror movies of all time, from 2007, um, he is, I guess, doing like a prequel that's coming out. Uh, it gets released September mm, soon, yeah. on VOD. On on uh, how many? Yeah, they, 
have we done now with that? With well, Texas with, yeah, with Leatherface, yeah, like and what? Texas Chainsaw. I mean, I it's track. definitely been. Well, I mean, you, you had the, uh, the you, had, you had the remake, you know, and stuff. And then, yeah, you had the one with uh, right. Jessica Biel was yeah, in it, so hot. Well, you got stuff. the first four that are kind of right, right they, together. It, yeah, part shout out to part three, Death Angel Board. Love it, love part three, Ken Foray. And then part four was the McConaughey. Yep, right. right that was the McConaughey one. And there were the two was, remakes. And it, yeah, the, the one Jessica remake Beale. was Jessica Biel, and right. then the other one was Rob Zombie's remake, right? No, no, no. The, no. Sec- the second one was the chick from Fast and Furious. No, Jord- yeah, Jordana, Jordana Brewster. Yeah. Brewster. Jordana Brewster. Was oh, and Ar- oh, okay. Arlie Ermey was yes, that one. Yes, yeah. but yep. then, then Texas Chainsaw 3D tried to pick it up from I where didn't the see that. terrible. Yeah, it didn't I, even, I didn't see that one. Didn't need that. to be 3D. That was another thing. That one's coming out. Well, that's the one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This one, I believe, is going to be. Uh, we're going to see a teenage Leatherface, I believe, in this movie that's coming up now. So the only thing that, it, uh, let's just hope he's not like a cry shield, you know, one of those like cry shield kids, you know, where he's, you know, the the hair goes over the one side, <laughs> and, uh, and, and 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 let's just hope that he doesn't have mommy and daddy issues, you know, and he's. And and uh, hey. like like I, I don't want to see something where you know like he he's like a whiner kid you know and like like he's like you know all about me 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 and right. you know I didn't get the new iPod and you know <laughs> so so I'm just gonna start hacking people up like slams his let, door yeah let's and not do that new AFI I do album. I do not <laughs> that's that that was part of the problem like I didn't like that backstory with with Halloween it was just like yeah. oh okay you're Sucks. a kid who's crying and your mom's a stripper it's like. Okay, I don't give a shit. You're supposed to be evil. Yeah, like right. you're supposed to be completely yeah, the evil. the boogeyman. Yeah. Uh, um, no not the backstory. Um, but I, <laughs> I, I'm I, going to say this is going to be the best one since the original. I'm, oh, shit. I'm going to say it. Wow, I hope. I'm just saying, and it's coming well, out. Well, I mean, I mean, probably, uh, see, the thing is, is, is when you just hope that they don't do it where they try to just overemphasize gore and violence and then there's not a good story, mm-hmm. you know, because I like they, it, you know, they can go that route too. They can, and then go, it's, they can go that route, but the guy who made it made. It, have you seen the movie Inside? Inside, no. It's a French movie. It's real good. It's fucking. If I were to pick my top three horror movies of the last like two thousand and on, that would be number two. Yeah. It would be okay, all right. Number one would be Martyrs. Number two would be Inside. Number three would be I Saw the Devil. Those are the three. I saw uh, the Devil horror movie. Yeah. I'm throwing it in there. Brutal revenge flick. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you can question my list. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I'm I'm I, I have all the faith in the world that uh it, it's in good hands. And I think it's gonna that's, be okay. Uh, that's the important part. Yeah. I think one and two are, are, are the gems and uh <laughs> I think this this next one's gonna be awesome. So but real quick, uh what was the first death metal record? Was it Death Scream Bloody Gore or yeah. Possess Seven Churches? Oh man, um, <laughs> I'm. I'd probably have to go with uh, death, scream, bloody gore. I'm gonna. Go I, I, you know, you know, yeah. po- possessed had 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 more more of a. Uh, it was still a sick stick, you know, sick album, but it was more more, more of a thrash, it, and like black. You know, I think scream, bloody gore. I guess yeah, more. I would go death metal there. Yeah. What little I know. About any of these genres, I'm gonna say I agree. Yeah, I, 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 agree <laughs> I, I do them, actually because totally. uh, I think Possessed is obviously one of my favorite bands, but um, they mix thrash and I think uh, the elements of black metal. There were right. obviously death and and Jeff Beccaro's vocal was one of my favorite singers. Period. But uh, you know, I, I I think death, scream, bloody gore that set the tone because I I, I think. Another band with great covers. I think Possessed yeah. uh, got more the credit for that because they used they had a song called Death Metal. Right. Okay. Okay. But I think so. You know what I mean? I I agree, I agree with you though. But with yeah. Like black and thrash to me. Like yeah. Very black and thrash. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Very slept on and I album. The death Metal song. It kind of picked up like a year later. Yeah, they like coined that. that. You know, just like Venom, you with said black, black metal, metal. But, right? Black metal. But yeah, they yeah, had yeah. nothing to do with what black metal became. Like Bathory is probably more 
influential in that. But everyone right. liked Venom because they were, you know, kind of, Venom. They were evil. For yeah, the time, yeah. You know? Cronus, Abaddon, yeah, you know, yeah. Mantis. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if, and if, shit. If, if if you're listening to this still and you're at the end, I'm just yeah. going to ask one favor: all you iPhone people. Just rate and review it because it helps us out. Yeah. Um, thanks for listening because people listen and that's cool. Who the fuck knew? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Up, please. Excellent. Thank yeah, you. that's you know, we've, awesome. Yeah, we've only been doing it for six months and uh, it's a fun thing to do to talk about movies and music because it's what we love. Um, and that's it, man. Thanks, Frank, for yeah. coming through. Thanks, Randall, for driving him here. Absolutely. No problem. Appreciate it. No, no, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, wait a minute, wait, wait, navigating. You know, this guy ruined my joke. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Let's like, like Jerry. Jerry, I know. <laughs> anytime <laughs> Jerry, he tags himself. And to finish off the brackets, 1985. Your your favorite record. It was close. I think mm. it was 29, 28. Yeah. Uh, the Cure. Beats out Slayer's uh, Hell Awaits. <laughs> Damn. And um, I, the, the Goonies beats out Better Off Dead. Fuck. Oh, man. I, I, I don't know. I just, I really? You're going to go Commando and Slayer, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I, I second I, that notion. What about Back to the Future versus the Goonies? Oh, Back wait, to, yeah, Back to the Future? We we left it out we, because we, we figured it was just automatic. I'd take Back to the away. Future. Are you crazy? Yeah, Back to the Future yeah. would have to That's win why that. We let, let I it mean, out. we yeah. left it out because we knew Marty every- McFly. But as a kid, for me, if I want to be honest, how I felt as a kid, Goonies meant more to me than Back to the Future. As an adult, looking at two movies, obviously, Back to the Future is a better movie. But as a kid, so I, I got to figure out which way I want to vote. Right. I don't know. I just thought, uh, like, I mean, like, I didn't like Goonies. I, like, I didn't get it. I'm, um, I was like, what was I? I seven? mean, like a bunch was, of kids, I was you know, I, hanging out. I was and, seven and then, when and I watched then it. Trying to find like a pirate ship or something <laughs> like that. And then you had that, that weird looking dude. Uh, wait, 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 what was Sloth, his name? Sloth. Sloth you know, right. and like, and he's friends with the chubby little kid. Like, like I, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> okay. The movie was all over the place. Back to the Future. What about the Corey Feldman wins. factor? The what? The, the Corey, Corey Feldman factor. He was in that. I mean, was he was he already doing that weird band of his? Oh no, boy, no. as well he or was no? Just doing hanging out with Corey Haim, All doing right. coke off his dick. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Oh man, I no, I I, I don't know. I, I good. No, you have to go back to the future. I mean, well, when you break I mean, it down like that, you just explained it in like the worst way ever. You're like a little fat kid. Oh, I loved like, it. Yeah. Guy looking for a pirate ship. I'm like. <laughs> All right, yeah, if you, if you, if you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you're gonna break it down like that, then obviously Back to the Future. We gotta get this cool. guy to call in for like movie reviews. I'm all for. Oh it, yeah, man. yeah, let's I, do listen, it, man. Listen, Seems I'll call in for quickly. movie reviews all the time. I'll give you, I'll give you the real story on a movie. Yeah, let's do I want to know what you think of the Void when you see it. Yeah. Watch the yeah. Void. That's gonna be I'm a gonna, good one. I'm going to. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. it's my favorite horror movie of the year because it, it's it, it, the the the. the like divided vote on it is bizarre. Passionately divided. Yeah, like I could understand you. Like, like they're talking about plot holes. I'm thinking, like, who was talking about plot holes during Hellraiser? Like, no one. Like, <laughs> there was no. Like, you know who what I'm saying? The fuck. Yeah. You're just like, awesome. You gave me right. 90 minutes of awesome. All right, I'll give yeah. you the ending. <laughs> you know what I'm Some saying? People like to pick at every I, little I goddamn yeah. thing, man. It's just like, I gotta watch yeah, it yeah, and enjoy yeah. it. And, and I mean, you know what? Like, like my my favorite movie of all time. Is Evil Dead Two? Okay. Oh uh, yeah. You know, uh, th- th- the movie was just amazing. Like, like you saw the genius of Bruce Campbell in the first movie. You saw it, it was coming out, mm-hmm. and by the time the second one hit, right. man, he was on fire. Oh, yeah. Can you like? All right. So, did you like Army of Darkness? Of course. Okay. Um, the show Ash versus the Evil Dead. I have not seen it because I do not have. Stars. Listen me either. You, you, like you gotta, it. you gotta, you gotta follow me home. You're That's right. <laughs> it. <laughs> it's, it's the be- like. If I you, heard it's amazing. Yeah, it's it is. fucking beyond amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's everything Especially that you. Especially that. That's your favorite film. There's no question you're gonna enjoy this. Oh, of course. I mean, you know, it's a continuation of two. It's just perfect. 
Yeah. Every episode is like I mean like twenty three minutes or twenty four. Yeah, violence in it. yeah. It, um, it's fucking two seasons. The one liners are still there. Yeah, give me some yeah. sugar, baby. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's it's genuinely funny. Like yeah. really fun. Like I'm like watching it, and like he's like constantly drinking and driving. Like with that, <laughs> so he's like sitting there, and he turns he turns to like Pedro. He's like, "Who the fuck drank all the beers?" He's like, "You did." <laughs> it's it's <laughs> a good show, even if you weren't a fan of Evil Dead. Yeah. So the fact that if you're into it, you, you, it's yeah, yeah, run, I mean, I know? definitely want to check it out. Uh, that so fire gonna, stick, man. I'm gonna have know. to. Okay. <laughs> I saw the to... I saw the watch went to his book signing. To yes, two, it was like two. Weeks I had ago band practice. I couldn't go. I and I mean, the only thing that uh, the, the one thing that I'm into right now, and just wrapping it up, is the strain. Oh, Guillermo nice. del Toro, yeah. the strain. Yeah, yeah. very good. Okay. Hey, they're up to season three, I think. Right? No, this is uh, season four, but wow. this will be it. This will be, be it. You know, because they don't want it. But wow. yeah, and also a shout out. Thank God they're bringing back The Exorcist on TV on Fox. Ah. Huh. I didn't know that. I didn't see that. Yeah, that because good. yeah, and uh, I I don't no, I don't want to go into it if you didn't see it because yeah. it, it's got a little interesting thing in there okay. from it, it it ties into the original Exorcist right. movie, but um, I I guess the numbers weren't there, but then somebody convinced them, you know, yeah. hey, let, let's try out another season of this, so that yeah. that's that's coming up. And that's starting uh, this month. That's cool shit. Get on that too. Check so. it out. Next episode, we're going to have uh, Joe Rubino from uh, obviously Tension, but now oh, yeah, yeah, I know. the yeah. Ice Cold Killers and uh, Dearly Departed and Two Kings and all that other shit. Cool. Um, so, yo, thanks, Frank, for yeah, being man, here. Check out the new Suffocation no problem. record. Thank you, guys. This, yeah. has been, uh, this has been awesome. Yeah, yeah, check out the new album of yes. The Dark Light. And uh, also, if you want to follow me, if you want to check out what I'm doing, Go to the official Frank Mullen page on Facebook. Nice. We will be there. Um, and then I'm going to make a playlist of all the bands that we talked about today. So on for Spotify and then I'll put the link up. So. Excellent. Right. Sounds good. Cool. All right. Later. later. All right. Later. Peace out.